uh, refresh the chat. All right, we got people in here. Absolutely. Uh, I'm live here. Epic Eric in the house on a Thursday night. It's been a long time, my friend. Can everyone hear me? Uh oh, I lost Eric. I can't hear Eric. Hello. What has happened? Oh, I heard you then, Eric. Can you hear me, Eric? I'm here, bro. I'm here. Okay. Okay. You're here. I got you. Okay. All right. I guess it froze we're up. Good. All of a sudden, we're, right. we're trying to get through a stream without having any audio video issues. <laughs> good luck with that, man. I'm praying. Yeah. Konnichiwa. Yeah. Konnichiwa, how, man. How have you been doing? Man, wow. Um, Been good. Been good. Working on some things in the Bass Lab, doing a little fishing. Um, had an exciting tournament with Scooter Lily, man. We, we, we could have pulled off the W. Got stuck on a sandbar trying to get into a little ditch with like 30 minutes left in the derby man had to get out the boat and both push hard and got stuck again and another push we rolled in with like 10 seconds before wow. we came in six and cashed a nice check it, uh, it's a bojangles tournament so it was fun man it was fun it was exciting man exciting yeah so that's good to be back i noticed that uh, your payouts for the bojangles are pretty nice because they are real nice i think i saw where you made for six uh a little bit more than 50 bucks it was like you know five six hundred bucks <laughs> like around yeah. here in a team derby you finish six yeah. you might get a hundred bucks so wow those payouts are really good they are real good and it it was nice because you know we, we were fishing free this year because we were the anglers of the year last year right. top top points uh, so we won the points championship so no entry fee all year we haven't been able to fish all their tournaments because we got conflicts with other tournaments so anyway man Man, look at everybody here. Ray Concepcion, Freestyle, Sean Seaball, man, yeah, man. Fat Guy Bassett. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up, man? Guys. Darius King. We got everybody in the yeah, house Yeah, I got to text man. Darius uh, after the stream. Me and him are going to go fishing in the morning. That's so awesome. It's so hot. Uh, I just talked to you about this. Guys, it's super hot here in the bait room, too. Um, <laughs> but uh, hopefully me and Darius can go uh, fishing just a little bit uh, tomorrow morning. I might bring the, go so I might bring awesome. the GoPro. Pro Come on, you got to, man. Probably don't I need to see Darius and you in action. Yeah, probably don't want to see me fishing, but Darius, he's been catching them. So. Uh, Darius is on him, man. He sends me a few picks here and there, man. So we got what? We got Tim Maynard? Yeah. Shoot, man. Jordan Meredith, Dan uh -oh, T. TK's in the house. Mike Luce with Junebug Crank Time. You know it's Junebug Crank Time, man. They ain't stole that yet over there in Japan. Hello. Yeah, I'm going to throw this bait right here. I showed it last week, but I don't know if, I don't know if you got any yet. The old mini shower. Oh, yeah. Boat. Look at that thing. Little oh, mini buddy, guy. man. It's all of work. I like bit. it, man. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, is, there anything, is there anything better than a top water bite, man? You just went straight to it, dude. No. All right. No. Let me go straight oh. to it, man. I've been waiting 17 years to throw this bait from Japan. All right. Let's see and it. Ask me if I got out there and threw it when I needed to because it wasn't fishing during the whole cicada thing. 17 years. I, we, we, I have seen one here. Look, man, look at him water wheel wings, dude. Ooh. Look at the side. It's the freaking, it's a Daiwa bait. It's the live in cicada, especially designed for Daiwa. So now I'm going to have to wait another 17 years to throw this damn thing. Who thinks it would have caught a bass? It's crazy. Maybe I'll go tomorrow morning in my little test pond because I got a few things I'm testing out in the test pond. And I'll throw it. Maybe they remember they were eating a bunch of them about, you know, a month ago. I'm fixing it. 17 years, Baxter. 17 years down the drain of waiting. Damn. I'm trying to find our video so I can share it to my Facebook page real quick. Did you throw something like cicada light? Would I? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I would. We don't have... Yeah. They, they haven't really shown up here. i tell you what we got really? this year. I did go. I, I went night fishing Fourth of July, um, mm -hmm. and dude, we had more mayflies than I've ever seen. It was a stupid amount of mayflies. Wow, mayfly hatch. I mean, you just throw a popper, right? I don't think they've come up with a mayfly lure. Yeah, I just throw a little popper or a wacky rig. Um, Although, why not throw a popper and then a mayfly or like a uh, front runner? 
or just get a mayfly design fly with a nice hook in it and throw it like a front runner. So you got a little fish trying to eat the mayfly. Right. Holy, holy man, that that prey predator response, right? That was the whole concept behind the front runner. Correct. And then uh, what else do I throw? A little, little finesse popper works pretty good. Uh, when the bluegill really, uh, so the bluegill will get like, they'll start eating the mayflies and all that, and that's when the large mouth and small mouth and whatnot will come on. And uh, a prop bait, like a Lucky Craft Kelly J or like a Brian's B. Like, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a brim. Yep. I can't understand why I can't even find our stream on my YouTube app. Like, right. Because I would like to share this out to people. Here, here we go. Here we go. We got to let the Facebook world. We got 81 guys in here. Let's see if we can break a couple hundred tonight. Uh, make sure you guys smash the like button, share it out. Uh, YouTube's been suppressing my streams a little bit lately. Actually, I think they're suppressing everybody's sp stream. Like, Travis, I, I get to catch his afterwards or whatnot. Yeah. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'll be at work and I'll just, you know, watch on my break or something. Because, you know, Travis, he'll go for like three or four hours sometimes. Oh, yeah, we definitely do, man. It's and pretty crazy. I'm like, man, why ain't Travis got 400 people like he used to? And why ain't other people, I'm like, man, it's kind of, it's weird, man. Last year, this time last year, right during the start of the, you know, the pandemic and all that, everybody was sitting at home. And, uh, man, it was like every night. It was either Bateman or Travis, sometimes both nights. And it'd be four or 500 both ways, 700, 1,000. And then... Oh, my gosh. It's like the last four or five months, everybody's live numbers have just fell off huge. So, all right. I agree, man. That There's something going on there, dude, because uh, it used to be way bigger for you too, man. You I, know? I don't know if it's... Uh, Remember we were hitting it. We hit a thousand one night. Yeah, I don't know if what it, the heck happened. Dude, I don't know. Yeah, me and you hit a thousand that stream like a night or two later, and I hit like eleven hundred. Yeah, I know. So, it's kind of crazy. I'm gonna share it on Facebook see if I can grab some more people in here. There you go. Yeah, I don't have I don't have Facebook, man. So you're a smart man. <laughs> I'll creep on my wife's Facebook, so. <laughs> that's funny honestly man. if i didn't do my social media bait man stuff with it because i share a lot of stuff on there i probably would like go in hiding mode because oh really yeah i enjoy seeing the baits and tournament stuff and people's fishing pictures that's all i really care for okay mm, man uh, Who? Oh man, Josh Fitchwell. Got it here. Eight man live. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, Will Perryman, what's going on? He asked if I fish the new Loomis NRX Plus. I have. Ooh. So tell me. Go ahead. Tell me what you think of the NRX Plus. So so um so I bought a Conquest a while ago, right? Yep. And the Conquest had this spiral wrap technology. So the NRX, I think, borrowed from the Conquest, and man, they did it right. Yeah. Um, I, I uh, fished the spinning rod right out of the gate, uh, doing some split shotting, and uh, it performed really, really well for me. I love the feel. They're lightweight. I was concerned because I love my NRXs so much. And then I have one of their bait casters uh, that they replaced uh, a rod for me from, and um, they're dynamite, man. I'm pretty impressed. So, yeah, I love it. I love, I love the, I love the way that they incorporate um, different flex points within the the, the module. Right. Um, you know, so they build in tapers, multiple tapers within the blank. That's kind of the magic, I think, of a Loomis. They load properly. Yeah. They're splined properly. They're incredibly balanced. They fit my arm. I don't know if anybody else. I mean, some guys are really particular about where the butt of the rod hits their arm. I don't want anything past my elbow unless I'm throwing a big swim bait. And I don't want anything too short. There's a lot of rods like Dobbins. And I'm not hating on anybody's rod, right. so don't be mad at me. It's all individual preference. This is I true. want that butt right, right about there, and that gives me leverage. So when I, when I, you know, when I sweep set or I snap set, however I'm setting, I tend to sweep set a lot. Um, I want the leverage and fighting a fish in particular. I want it. I want it to go right to about there. And Loomis has the perfect handle and you know butt of the rod for me. So anyway, there you go. That's my that's my opinion on 
on Loomis Rods overall, and I think they got it right with the NRX Plus. Yeah, I've used the Conquest before. I, I got to use it before it went to market. Uh, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that video is on my channel. It was me and the guy that used to be the product developer for Shimano. Uh, we went to Lake X, and dude, that Conquest was a beast. You know, uh, and a Bantam. Got to use a Bantam and a Conquest before they went to market. Oh, we got a five dollar donation from Chris McCluskey. Thank you, Chris, for the five dollar. Make you holler. Um, appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I don't ask for dono donations, but if anybody wants to donate to the stream, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate it. I mean, we've lost Eric. Hold on. I'm trying to uh, get our alerts to show up here. That way, if people subscribe and whatnot, I get to see it. All right, we should be good. Uh, let's see here. I sent a picture to your Instagram page, Bateman. All right, Robert, I'll check it here in just a minute. Uh, how's the audio? If anyone's got an audio comment, let me know. Eric, are you going away? Eric? Hello. I can't hear Eric. Back now. Okay, I can. You're kind of choppy. choppy. Okay, I can hear you now. I don't have anybody on the internet. It's just us. So everyone says the audio is very nice. Um, hey, I heard you talked about a. Fr you talked about it for some reason. Your audio to me, my headphones was. Choppy. Yeah, your audio is choppy as well to me. It must be a Skype deal. Let's see here. All right. Everyone says the audio sounds good. Uh, people are asking about a Norman front runner. I just happen to have one laying right here in front of me. Uh, that's what a front runner is. And basically, you run your main leader line uh, through right here. And you, you can tie it. Mm -hmm. And then you got the nose on it. And uh, some people thread yeah. this through, but it's slide. But you basically run your leader line uh, to the nose, and it comes out the back, and then goes your spook or whatever. And this thing runs up in front and, and kind of goes back and forth, and then your spook back here chases the front runner, so it gets that predator uh, chasing prey. Yeah, yeah, they're, and uh, they just get kind of hard to find. Uh, I know PH Customs is making one; they want like fifteen dollars for it. Right. Hey, it's, Eric is cutting out. Bateman is good. I don't know what happened. I guarantee you my stupid internet company's done that thing where they start slowing me down. I'm getting really tired of it. I pay like $150 a month now for internet. And they keep capping my bandwidth. Let me go shut the Xbox down. I'll be right back. <laughs> all right. Cool, man. C can you all hear me all right? <laughs> I don't know, man. How about you coming in right now? Because Kevin was really happy for me, man. I didn't hear me. So let me know, man. Sound off. It's cutting. All right, I'm reading, man. Talk to me, folks. How's my audio? Anyway. Hey, uh, where's it in the front? Sound off. Very Mickey. Okay, I'm just going uh, to be pissed. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Well, I just shut the Xbox choppy. down. So we'll s s s uh -uh. go, Judd. Nobody's, uh, nobody's on the internet. It's just me. <laughs> Cam said you're a little choppy. Yeah. Better than God, Marty, what is going on? Pretty choppy, breaking up, still choppy. Nobody's on. Damn. My wife and little girl Internets don't like each other. For my some wife reason. and little girl just left to go to Walmart, and Bateman Junior's at the neighbor's house. There's nothing on, other than my stream. But uh, hey, I don't know. I don't know. This it just gets really frustrating. It's like the more you spend money with these people, 
the more they have an excuse to not do it right. And they say, well, you've got the best internet. We don't know what the issue is. Well, I used to never have these problems. I just couldn't get the audio to work. <laughs> I know, right? So. Yeah. It says Eric well, is just choppy. But, Bateman, you're good now. All right. Everyone says I'm good, so. All right. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about JDM baits and stuff. Uh, so, Eric, in your opinion, what is the obsession over JDM fishing tackle versus the American side? Is it because it's hard to get? Is it because it's just so much different? Is there stuff better? Or what's your opinion on that? Man, if you guys can hear me, I, I think it's because of the design and the thought that goes into the design. Um, you know, uh, starting like the whole bladed crank, crank thing got my attention in JDM. Um, the way they have, and the way they think through everything about the bait, the look of the bait, right? I mean, let's be honest, as fishermen, we are any more effective than anything else out there. Um, some of the deadliest crankbaits I've ever thrown have been some of the deadliest. So, but, but I think they were sleepers, right? And a great example of an ugly bait that is simply badass. Uh, that's not a bait. Um, the man's thin man in plastic, which was based on the little speedy right. by Jerry Lawrence. Ugly as sin, but damn, does that bait catch fish? It's a flat sided bait. It's got a big head on it. I've got a couple up here. I'll show you. But there is nothing special about this bait, but it catches fish. And it was redesigned uh, in conjunction with Pete Glue by Bob Allen. That's the Bob Allen remake of the Little Speedy by Jerry Lores. And there's a Little Speedy. By, there's a Thin Man in plastic that Mike Iconelli had man's make uh, because it was so effective and wanted something to, to throw, but, you know, because yeah. you couldn't get the balsa version. But anyway, so if you look at those baits, there's nothing special. They're ugly. It's amazing how popular that. Effective that color in your sometimes right that, basically a pineapple color it's amazing how popular that is right now <laughs> oh, man we're really breaking up hey yeah, I'm attention uh, to detail man e e e e e yeah I'm, bad I'm, man should I just rejoin get a better Skype a yeah. Skype line because Skype is notorious for getting you shitty yeah lines, I'll do it you know I mean? I'll do it uh, Paul I apologize, guys. Let me call Eric back on Skype and see if we can't get this going again. All right. Can you hear me, Eric? All right, man. How's, how's it? Yeah, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. I don't know what was going on. It was perfect for the first five minutes, and then... Bring her back in here. <laughs> Kyle, that's funny, man. Uh, I, can I can redo it. I got you in here. I had, I just resized your window to fit you in the, fit you in your little box. All right, let's hear let's hear from everybody. How do I sound now? Sounds good to me. There's going to be a little delay. If I can resize you. I hate it when you go to grab like the handles on something. Yeah, and it, it, I end up grabbing something else, and it moves my stuff around. I really don't like that. But. Right, right, right. Talk to us. We gotta wait. Sounds great. Okay, we got one. Thumbs up, Stephen Smith. It's better now for Eric. Good so far. Good, 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 good. He needs a refund. Send that money, Sean. We'll get you a refund All right. right in the middle, everyone, man. Everyone no says good. All right. So what I was saying on that crankbait, Eric. Wait a minute. They want me to do that over because yeah. nobody heard what the hell I was saying. You yeah, asked restart me the question. that. That was very important information. What makes JDM, in your opinion, so appealing? I think that's what you asked me, right? Yeah, basically I, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And I said it's design and, of course, looks. They think through their design. Um, some of the things that got me really excited was the whole bladed crankbait category. It, it wasn't just a blade stuck on a treble hook, right? It wasn't just a blade stuck on the bait, but it was a blade stuck on the bait of a particular Imakatsu bait to make it hunt. Ah, the and I believe I got one Imakatsu. right back here. 
Uh, you do. There's there's multiple multiple bladed crankbaits in the market the, uh, right now, right? The Waddle Bat is that the one the you're re bats. referencing? Yes. Yeah, and there are many other bladed crankbaits out there. But so, but I wanted to go to some American made baits, and in particular, a bait that's plastic, made by Mans, and it's called the Mans Thin Man, and it's about the ugliest plastic bait you'll ever see. And it was based on the Little Speedy, a Little Speedy. A flat-sided crankbait, and I call it a worming crankbait. Jerry Lawrence made the original. Oh, yeah. and, and then Bob Allen with Pete Gluzik brought back the quiet killer. I had the lips made for these, by the way. And these were made by Bob by hand. But anyway, nonetheless, Mike Iconelli loved the bait so much, and he couldn't get any more from Jerry, so he had man's reproduce it. But it's super ugly, but it's deadly effective. So what sells in crankbaits and what sells in lures? It's got to catch our attention right. first, right? But then the design has to be for a reason, right? It has to achieve something. So, and then the action of the bait's got to trigger bites and it's got to come through for you, right? But anyway, so back to it, man. I think it's design, engineering, and it's looks, man. Their finishes are second to none. Their attention to detail is epic. And their consistency in manufacturing is dynamite. I mean, you think about the RC 1.5 and how it changed the square bill game, yeah. right? I mean, the tolerances they made that bait initially were just legendary, man. You knew when you got a 1.5 with RC on the front, that thing was going to have the same characteristics of the last bait you bought, yeah, it's right? Pretty Is crazy. it the same today? It's pretty crazy. The new ones are, I'm not going to use the word junk. They're just not the same. Well, a lead ball versus a tungsten ball. I don't know if anybody knows that. Did that shift the weight because lead's bigger than tungsten? Don't I know. Think it Less does. paint on the bait? Don't know. Same plastic? Don't know. Same thin thinness and wall construction? I don't have a clue. I haven't cut one in half, and I'll never cut a 1.5 yeah. OG in half to know. I actually talked to Mike Otten uh, not long ago, and uh, he said, dude, I, I think I, 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 you know, he sold all, a bunch of his tackle and, you know, he, right. Yeah. You know, and because uh, he's really gotten out of like tournament fishing and all that stuff, and right, right, you know, he moved from Benton, Kentucky. He lives in Indiana now, so he moved and he got remarried and all that. And uh, yeah, you know, his new wife actually, she's had some brain issues, had surgery. It's just a crazy deal. Oh, his man. son had leukemia, uh, and dude, Mike's a good guy, and so I hate hearing all that, but it's just like bad luck, Mike, there for a while. But anyway, he's always in good spirits sure. and. He, he said, "Dude, I think I got my RC prototypes." And he says, "What?" Yeah. He says, he "He's said, bringing it back." Yeah, he said, "I better. think I found them. You know, I'll give them to you so you can mm -hmm. show them on the stream. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. that nobody's ever seen before." But you know, Ma that'd be unbelievable. You know, Mike man. basically be... designed that bait for Lucky Crab. Sure, and, you've, you know, you've told that you've told that story to me. It's awesome. Yeah, uh, I love I love history behind it. And, and I'll tell you another story that's going to blow your mind. Talking about JDM crankbaits, right? The Bling 55. It's back, baby. I know I've, I, uh, well, wait a minute. Oh, no. But what you, but what you didn't know uh -oh. was it was designed by who? Here in America, uh, a handmade balsa bait maker named the Big M. Marty, Marty Burns. Burns. He is the guy behind the Bling 55. Dude. And I'll... I'll let him tell the story because uh, he needs to be coming on a stream at some point. But Big M, if you're out there yeah, listening, right. I'm gonna tip my hat to the Big M. And and this brings up something. Really Got to cool. give credit so, where credit is due. You damn right. So Mike <laughs> Auten with the 1.5, Marty Burns, Big M with the Jackal Bling. So all you Bling freaks out there, man, you be thanking Marty That's, Burns, the Big M. Matter of fact, and I, uh, <laughs> Marty's one of the nicest guys I've ever interacted with. I went to Texas he's during a, that ice storm. He messaged me, said, "He's amazing. If you're going through Arkansas and it's too bad, just let me know. You can stay at the house." I'm like, "All right, I'll take that. Uh, we'll build baits." I'm going to show you guys something. This is my epic shad. Marty Burns built me the prototypes. I took this down to Florida and absolutely cracked them on shell beds. Uh oh. I mean, when I say cracked them, I'm talking cracked them. I'm talking janks. Janks, and baby. They, I, I I couldn't turn a couple of the fish. So I wanted to show you this bait. And you tell me if this doesn't look like a supersized Bling 55. Buddy. Ooh, yeah. Buddy. Thumbnail bill. Dude, that's hand painted by me. Sorry. It's kind of ugly. But what can I tell you? TK's on me about the uh, little the three racing stripes over here. But who cares? This thing, they ate it. They ate it. Listen. And that ticker in Ooh, there? Yeah. That's what 
part of what makes that bling so good. It's not a real rattle. It's just like. Well, why do you think it has that? Because Marty yeah. was behind it. So, hey, guys, there you go. The Bling 55 was not an OG Japan bait. It was made right here in America by a handmade balsa builder called Marty Burns, the big M. So um, stay tuned for updates on that coming at you strong. That's right. But Eric, anyway, what's your, want, what's your, want, what, well, time out. hey, you got a badass Hold shirt on. on. I got a badass shirt. Thank I'm you. interrupting you. I'm sorry. Look, man, I'm interrupting you. That's okay. I'll no, turn around. Come drop on. your, this what's is, your, oh, the Bass Lab. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Hey, this was printed by the Print Craft. This was their first job, man. Very good. Uh, uh, TK's wife, uh, Amy, Marie Shanklin, um, printed this shirt, man. So, uh, yeah, they're available on the Bass Lab website, Epic Eric's Bass Lab, on Instagram. I only have a couple in stock, so, you know, if you want to support, go ahead. That's cool. That's right. I've got my, I got my stickers up there, too. Come on. Bass Lab sticker. What else we got? I was just, Leg, I was just trying to nudge you to get a through. shameless plug in here. <laughs> Hold on, man. Dr. Krankenstein, you all know you need them. And where's my river rat? Do I have a river rat? There it is. Dude. What about Sh Rise and Glide? Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Hold on. Boom. Dude, that, I'm glad you that one's sweet right there. Dude, I got to figure out how to get these on shirts, man. Come on. Don't you think? And I got large and Basically, small ones. Basically, I think anyway, you got to... Thanks for letting me show No, that. no. You plug anything you want to anytime. Uh, and, of course, if anybody wants a jank shirt, there it's... Uh, the store's linked in my bio. Um, got a new shirt. I will say, I told Eric, got a new shirt. Eric seen the design. What's up, Alex Rudd fishing? Alex Rudd, What's my up? man. <laughs> we, uh, I've got a new got a shirt dropping Saturday night on the stream. I'll show you guys. If you like OG gangster rap and you like bone top orders, you'll love this shirt. Dude, that's awesome, man. I think that's clever, dude. I'm just I trying love to it. do something I... funny and cool once a month. If I sell one, great. I if I sell so cool. 100, awesome. It's awesome. I, I want to tell you a story about the first time I committed to a JDM bait. You just showed it. And so I, I'm happy if you show it again. I don't really care because I've told the story a million times. But but this this got me. And somebody pointed out that a lot of JDM baits aren't made in Japan. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me because as long as the manufacturing is consistent, right. the finishes are great, and the action is what I want to trigger a bite in my hook, my strike to catch ratio with the bait is good. I'm happy. I don't care where it's made, but the designs coming out of Japan, maybe, yes. maybe. I th actually, so, I would in, say in, in, in Japan, yeah, there's a there's a res well, they, there's a respect thing in there too. Yeah, a lot of yeah, those dude. companies won't. Hey, if X and Y Z brands got this exact design. We may understand it's a jerk bait or understand the internals, but we're not going to just KO it. We'll figure out a different way to do the same thing so it's ours. Um, right. And one thing I'll say about Japan, if you've ever done, if you're going to college or school for any type of business, you're going to hear about Kaizen and Sigma 6 and all sure. this quality control stuff. Yeah. All that originated in Japan. And that's how they kick the Americans' ass in the TV wars well, and electronics. Well, well wait for a, a minute. Time. Wait a minute. First, before all that happened, you know who went over to Japan to teach them the Deming theory? Ooh. He was an American. Mm -hmm. This is true. And we didn't want to work on that here. No. Charles uh, Charles Deming, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong out there in the audience, but I know the Deming theory of quality management. This is true. And so. It's incredible to me, right? So anyway, the back and forth between America and Japan, a lot of things are borrowed. Everything old is something new again today, and I've got some examples of that that I want to show. But I want to tell a story about a bladed crank that got my attention. I got deep into the JDM market. It happened for me in the wintertime years ago. been a JDM freak for a long, long time, and there is no way that I can still keep up with it today, but it's I have real. found some gems, some gems. I'm Jim. So I'm gonna show you guys. My, this my, is the bait buddies, Eric's talking about. My, yeah, my buddy scored this weekend. Their big bass came in third. They won the weekend before on a JDM bait that I turned my buddy on to. I won't talk about it because he's about to fish the Toyota series. I, I'm sorry. It's okay. I gotta keep. We gotta wraps. keep a few things in the wraps. But that bait right there, I took it out for the first time. I wasn't skilled with the bait. Here's all I knew about the bait: that you cannot overpower Correct. the bait because I figured it out as soon as I fucking threw it. You know, if I tried to speed it and, and burn it, it just blew out. 
But I said, you know what? There's enough action on that bait hunting action with that blade on the bottom and the shape of the blade is what creates the effect to make it want to move and hunt. So I threw it with Bob Cherry. We were on the Potomac River. We're on the Virginia side. We're on wood. And he had his OG minus one double stamp. Mm -hmm. Thing is 25 years old. Alabama shad color. Badass. It's chewed off. The paint's gone almost. But it catches him. I've watched him wreck him on that bait. He goes down the bank. We could see the wood. It's on the bank. These are laydowns. He's taking the best first cast. He's casting to the Vs. He's casting to the trunk of the log. He's casting to the root ball. And he can throw a crankbait. This dude can flat out crank. He throw. I'm in the back of the boat. I just toss my stuff behind him. Bass would come out and eat it. I'm like, mm. oh. Next next log. Same thing. I freaking had five fish down the first set of logs. And he's like, what in the hell? I'm like, dude, I don't know what to say. I took out the big bats, the bigger size, and we went back up. I caught two snakeheads and then several more bass. I go, you want one now? He goes, sure. I gave him one. We continued to fish wood, and he caught a few. Did the same thing probably a month later in a tournament on the upper bay, very popular spawning cove, post-spawn, took the waddle bats out. My buddy stoned a minus one. He didn't get a sniff. I'm stoning them. When I say stone them, they're not all like fives and sixes, so don't 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 pick on me right now. I'm not. But they were two two and a half to three and a half. We didn't catch any giants that day on that bait, but we got our limit in a hurry. And as soon as I gave him a waddle bat, he started catching them too. I'm not going to. So I'm not going to fish shandy, so, Eric. No. So so here's the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes, and why I searched for JDM tackle was to find something different. Correct. Right. Yes. A lure that had an action and potentially something the fish hasn't seen to trigger a bite. And especially being a co-angler, right? Because I love mm -hmm. being in the back of the boat. And my job when I'm team tournament fishing is to produce, right? So I don't want to be sitting there throwing a minus one, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite grass baits of all time, super shallow. I wanted to have a complementary bait that I felt could put some fish in the boat. And I've done that with flat-sided balsas made in America. I've done that with some JDM spinner baits. You know, I've talked about them on the show before. Yeah. The Super Eruption, it's one of my You're favorites. It does guy. different things. you damn the, right, the man. Beeble? I have not thrown the Beeble yeah, yet. Yeah, that's made by, uh, it makes the Beeble. It's this bottom lip bottom-up company in Kanatachu City, Tokyo, Japan. It's very compact. Nice. nice, nice. My only issue with JDM spinnerbaits is they use a small hook. But they do. But it's very not sharp. The super eruption. Not the super not eruption. Not the super eruption. No, super eruption is nice. Yeah, I mean, speaking of By JDM By the way, if y'all ever want to get on Eric's good side, <laughs> and he might send you a t-shirt. If you'd send him a couple super eruptions, he will do a lot of good, good favors for you. Oh. Oh, I'm good on super eruptions. I you think I got some stock in that bait, man? Dang, dang. But um, I mean, to continue with the bladed crank bait, this is from Imakatsu too. It's the waddle, um, the waddle bats. That that one's um, got a bigger. I'm sorry, than mine. Bat, bat, battle bats. Battle oh no, bats. it's a complete bait. This is a deep diver. This thing is like this, man. And it thumps. Now I've, we're talking. I've caught hey, it pretty damn before good. Before I get too in depth here, uh, yeah. What? Are a couple sites that uh, you can find some JDM hookup tackle is good for US, you know, stuff that yeah. they import. Hookup tackle, tackle warehouse has a JDM section, and lately they, they have actually started getting quite a bit more stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I might link some stuff to TW, you know, that I'm an affiliate, so you all use the link, sure. But sure, I never itchy bond, yeah, I'm never going to tell people where to not go, so um, yeah, itchy bond tackle. Uh, is uh, yeah. Japanese import tackle? Is that one? Yep, yep. Japan import tackle and samurai tackle. My buddy used samurai all the time. Yeah, yep. I do. I've ordered from there. I don't think there's a site. And there's a lot of eBay resellers that you know are are JDM. And I trust eBay. I've never had a problem off of eBay. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of used uh, JDM tackle that you can buy really cheap. Look, it doesn't have to be new and come in the box to be effective, correct. right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so, dude, you're fired up, dude. Did I am, you eat man. It sushi gets me going. before the stream. <laughs> you know, man. No, I did not. But konnichiwa, konnichiwa. You, you, yeah, Carolina tackle, Tim. Good, good. Yeah, call. Carolina, Carolina tackle's tackle's a good one. Uh, there's very nice. And I'll, I'll be honest with those who got Facebook. There's a really good. Somebody mentioned Ethan 
uh, Rickard in here. He said, I've been looking for that jackal bounty fish. I know a couple guys have already got a few. Uh, yeah. That, that, you know, importers. Um, yeah, Shim Reels. Shim Reels is on, on uh, all over eBay. Yeah, I, for I really sure, like man. that jackal bounty fish. And if you watch the Hookup Tackles video that by iCast, they went to the jackal booth. It's a really funny video because, yeah. you know, they kind of dog on the copycats and stuff like that. But the guy yeah. from Jackal was explaining how they designed the bait. And he really went in depth mm-hmm. as, you know, this isn't just a straight walk the dog. The bait doesn't just come at you like a fluke. Mm-hmm. It's designed to walk back and forth with very little movement forward. So you can work yeah. it for a long period of time, especially when you're working over the tops of grass. All of a sudden you get to yeah. a nice open water spot in the grass. It can just sit there. And uh, he explains the mesh in there is really good, but all it does is reiterate how much brain power goes into uh, some of these Japanese baits. Doesn't mean but what's that... interesting. Go what... ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting is is that there's a lot of new baits that are Japan Japanese JDM inspired design that were taken from and inspired by An American older American mm-hmm. baits. The head and crazy crawler, the whole walking yes. bait craze now. And I'm talking like in Florida, I threw the Monk Allure Works design. It's a big, big, big crawler bait. And I mean, I could cast it a mile, 65 pound braid. And I mean, it had some of the most violent strikes I've ever seen. Brent Anderson was with me and we were fishing the jungle, uh, you know, Jurassic Park, Kenansville. And man, it was like last strike of the day. And it was just vicious. But uh, you can cast the bait a mile, but it's truly a souped up crazy crawler. Isn't that interesting? That whole category of baits, was it inspired by the head and crazy crawler? Or was there a walking bait prior? I'll give you another one. Who remembers the Depths Pulse Cod that had a bell inside of it? It's a popper, Mm -hmm. and it does this. Watch this. Who knew about this one? I I didn't. I almost ordered one the other day, by the way. I keep seeing that bait on on Hookup Tech on TW. Inside inside this old American made bait is the same thing. It's a knocker on a spring. Do you got a boing lure? I sure do. Dude, so the guy that <laughs> invented loud. the original boing lure lives literally about four blocks from my house. That's he so used crazy. the E string on an original guitar wire in a split shot. Crazy? You know, he actually would modify an original head and super spook and run that. Yeah. E string in there in a split shot, and yep. now the companies, you know, they've changed and modified it uh, uh, quite a bit. It's got their own proprietary mold. But okay, here's here's another one for you: the Budweiser beer can with a spinner on the oh, back. Yeah. Check. Okay, yeah. heading, and look, the Jackal Bunny with a spinner on the back. How much different? So is you got that than this right here. This is the Depths MT weight. It's an oversized Bud Light can. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So. So guys, it's you know as much as we like are hating on Berkeley right now for the gilly, yeah, because they su- supposedly took it from Japan. Supposedly, do we do do we hate on Jackal for stealing the Budweiser beer can? And by the way, nobody was throwing the buzzer Budweiser beer can. You guys thought this was a joke bait, but honestly, it, it this catches them, but this would too. Now, I just kept the Budweiser because it's kind of like have a bud for you, but. There's there's a very distinct action to these bladed crankbaits and on the back of this and man it makes just a crazy noise that MT wake that you're talking yeah. about don't sleep on dude, it dude it's a good one it dude when I yep I've thrown it tested out it's makes some that blade uh, here's your one of your favorite things about fishing tackle is secondary action secondary action is so key. you're going to get the and wake that, you're going to get I don't know what a, a triple action. I guess you're going to get the wake. You're going to get the flash mm-hmm. from the blade, but that blade sure. that come back, hits the bait and knocks it. And it does. It so makes you a get knock. three yeah. different it's things a, going in. Same thing with this. This doesn't wake. This is a, this is a subsurface bait, but you know, you could get this to wake, but it will go subsurface. So this is a bladed minus one. And you know, on the back of the pack, hello, look at what they did with that. A lot of people did this Ooh, with the IMA. Put the worm on there. They put, Right, they take they take the um, spinner off and put a you know a, a hook on with a worm. Pretty cool, right? But anyway, that's what makes this bait special. The the secondary action when you when you worm this crankbait through wood, mm-hmm. when it backs up, it will turn around. It will turn around. 
you could snap the rod, it'll do a 180 and look at the fish. And they just, and when you go to engage the reel, they got to eat it. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, secondary, tertiary action. Is that a word? We made it. <laughs> if not, we just made it. Let's copyright it. No. Tertiary action. I know I've been tertiary. really hard on Berkeley and the ghillie thing, and a lot of people have. Uh, I know they have, but what I, I was trying to demonstrate was a lot of inspiration and lure design. Those two baits I just showed came from older right. American-made baits from a company called Hedden. Is Hedden pissed off? Is anybody raising up their arms in the no. crawler category? Nah, they should if that's what the deal is. So there's a lot of inspiration, right. and I get it. I get it. I think, too, and I'm the world's worst at this, too, Eric. It, you know, it's, it's a lot easier sometimes to... Uh, instead of praise a company, it's a lot easier to say, uh, yeah. oh, you, you didn't do your work, you're just copying. It, it's a lot easier to point out the negatives and the positives. And I think I said this, and I know Alex Rudd said this as well, and I, I respect Alex. He's really into the JD. And matter of fact, I messaged him, said, if you want to join in, we'll, we'll go triple threat here. But at the end of the day, do you have an I, I see Gilly? Do you have the icy gear? I didn't buy one yet. No. So, okay. Epic Eric, the guy that's got more baits than anybody I know, he doesn't have one. Did he? Did you know about mm -hmm. that bait? Yeah, but I just got the bellows gill. Because I, I just, there's something about that realistic look. I wanted more of a suggestive action right. than, than like the real thing. You know, what's that, um, what's that bad bit? The bed bait. That um, oh my gosh, Dean Rojas, it's the gill and I know exactly uh, what you're talking called? about. Clark Ream talks about it all the time. Man, I got it. I sitting back there in the bait room, man. I have to go look at it. I'll bring it out. But anyway, yeah. So those baits, I mean, maybe for I just I don't know, man. Lateral perch. Why do they? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Why do they eat? Why do they eat? Uh, you know, why do they eat a jig? It doesn't have a face and an eye. No. Right, it, it doesn't it, look like it, I mean, anything. It's a piece of lead right. with a skirt on it. So, 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 if the ghillie makes sense, why not create a flipping shad and a swimming shad? I, you know, I don't know why do bass strike the things that they strike. Do it? Does it need to look exactly like the the prey to, to evoke a strike? I don't know. I'm not I'll, sure what half the shit that we throw for bass looks like. What in the world does a jank juice crankbait look like? But they eat it. <laughs> Shark, what's what up I'm there? Chartreuse purple? Or they think it's a gill? Are they reacting from yeah. the color? Chartreuse powder blue, <laughs> number one selling yeah. crankbait color. Yeah, yeah, it's the action like this OSP that I tied up Ooh. in the Bass Lab, man. So I'm not using the trailer. I'm using a zonker strip, right? A big magnum zonker yeah. strip, which is there's nothing like fur, by the way. This thing is so leachy in the water, man. And I, and I did a little flash on the blade with some Lucky Craft scales. They don't make that anymore, by the way. But that dude right there is bad to the bone. I, I think if I took that up in smallmouth land, I could have a field day. So with my buddy, uh, Narrowgate Bates, he's building rats now with zonker's tails. And every time he builds them, people are just like, I got to have the zonker tail. Got to have the zonker tail. Well, if you really like zonker tails, switch out your legs and your frog with zonker strips. Ooh, that's a good idea. And they make bard zonker strips. There is no, there's nothing that you can manufacture that looks like fur and feather. You know, like this little chatterbait that I tied up, man, with a zonker Ooh. strip. Man, that's a that's an old one, dude. I put a little flash of it. Every time I throw this thing, I retired it because I, I got worried that I was going to lose it. But you know what this is. It's not a Z-Man. Yeah. They got sued by Z-Man. Remember that blade? Yep, <laughs> sure do. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's another Bass Lab creation. I did that One years ago. One thing I'll say is, uh, well, let's stay on blade jigs for a minute. Here's the one you introduced to me, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the Nori's Hula Hula Chat. Boom, right there. And you look at it and think nope. they made it upside down, but they didn't. They did that for a yeah. reason. So the way that blade's mounted, see if you guys can see that how that blade is mounted. It's a totally different connection to Z-Man, really. But when it's coming through wood, this is a wood worming chatterbait. I guess that's how you would explain it. That blade, it hits the branches and it'll flip it over. Or it just it just doesn't get hung up. It is a great, this is a shallow wood fisherman's dream for a bladed jig. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what. That's right. That's why I got them. And um, they're expensive, dude. I, I was looking on eBay today, like 25 bucks. 
to get one of these. One guy had them listed for here's a joke, uh, eleven twenty, but then you had to pay twenty five dollars. <laughs> so it's like a thirty six dollar. What the world was he shipping I, it in? I, I no, that's the deal. They try to advertise a low price and they get you for shipping. Now, if you're ordering a bunch, you're fine. But if you want to try one, skip it, man. But if anybody's dying for one, I got a lot because I I heavied up back in the day before they got expensive. Mm-hmm. Just DM me and. I'll part with a few. I got I got the ten There's grand. There's people on eBay um, right now. They do that yeah. every time we stream. I, I feel oh like that God. sometimes happens when me I, and you or Smallmouth Crusher stream break out something like that. True. Like true. The, do you remember what happened when we talked Boston crank beats like a year and a half ago? I got on there oh my and God. I said, "Hey, look, dude, I just found a Coulter crank." Like two days later, it was over like two hundred dollars. It's ridiculous, man. I'm, I'm, you know, that's what that's what hurts you because. You know, I know I want to share stuff with people, but then it, it, you know the stuff goes kooky sometimes. So I'm not saying we drive it, but no. it's all of a sudden it gets popular, and I guess when sellers are looking at that, it goes a little goofy. Uh, so. I got some other bladed jigs. I didn't know I had these. Uh, yeah, my, I got a JDM guy hooked me up for some giveaways for Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Unfortunately, I've only got a hold of like four winners. I email people constantly. Hey, you want any new stuff? But uh, I haven't thrown this. You may have. I don't want to really want to give out the package. This is a Raid Max blade. Check that. Yeah. You got one of those? I. Yeah. I threw it. I threw it this spring. Um, it looks. It didn't necessarily outfish the uh, uh, the Z-Man, but um, you know, it had a different vibration, but it didn't produce the strikes that I thought it would, man. There you so. Go. It looks yeah. good. Looks real good. I love the hook. I love the build. What are you here? Um, I didn't know I had this. this a, yeah. Here's an OSP jig. This is the Weed Rider. I'll get this one. I think, I think I'm... And if you don't know what OSP stands for, people in the stream, Osprey Spiritual Performer. Yeah, man. Dude, OSP's got it going on, too. They make some good they stuff. They do, man. Yeah, those are, those are really like sleeper companies in a lot of ways, you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of cool, man. Kind of cool. What else I got in here? I haven't even seen this. Sean, Sean Lai, I got you, man. You let me know what you need, brother. Yeah, the Weed Rider. Pretty cool. Have you heard of this company? Me, bro? Look at this big freaking big old square bill. <laughs> Look at that. That looks that looks like the uh, Rick Klung King Kong one, man. It does. It's like a Strike King 4.0 JDM style. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen those on I like Rick. I like. Have you thrown Rick's bait I have yet? Not. The new one. I have. I got a. That thing's got a big presence. I caught a couple on it. Uh, I didn't get. I didn't get the like early spring crank like I wanted to. Like on my home river, I'd be throwing the King Kong shad around rip wrap and stuff, and probably catching some bigs on it. You know, because they get keyed into the white perch in the spring, Here. and you throw a bigger bait like a BDS four. Um, you Here's know, a bladed jig. Damn. Uh, this is a Flash Union. It's called the Flash Jumper. I'm, I'm, yep. I don't know. I'm not, I've never. So the bladed jigs are extremely popular over in Japan. How about this one? This little micro. This is pretty cool, dude. I caught one of my. I caught the biggest smallmouth of the trip up there with Will at Gajo Bates on on the Saint Lawrence. Look how tiny that thing is. It's a football head. I'll put a little conquistador tackle freaking tra- crawl trailer on the back, and I drug this thing around Will, on Will's suggestion, by the way. I lost one the day before in Ontario that I couldn't turn around. I was throwing it on a spinning rod, oddly enough, which was dumb. I don't know why. But I did land the second one, so I was one for one on big, small. It's like over six pounds. But that little dude right there, football head, compact size, you know what I mean? Shaky chatter jig, man. It's garage craft, pretty badass. Uh, Rudd tell me, you know? Rudd tell me he won't be able to join tonight, but sends his best wishes. What he said, uh, he's hanging out with Miss Bethany, which is, hey bud, hang out with your wife. You only get one of them, unless you're my <laughs> buddy that's married four different ones. Probably because he wasn't ever hanging out with them. Yep. But uh, yep. Anyway, the Dara the Dara break blade looks like uh, better than Chatterbait Micro. I I have used the break blade. I've got a I've got a couple of like mini Chatterbaits that um, you know everybody's. I guess this is pretty interesting to me. Um, they they're bringing back I guess the Chatterbait Mini. 
Yeah, it's but, called a Mini Max, so I'm guessing it's kind of like their version of like, you know how compact. Well, flippage... explain explain this to me. This is the Chatterbait Mini that I've had for a long time, and I've caught some big fish on it when the bait fish get small in the I've fall. I've got one of them, and Bait Man Junior throws it in ponds all the time. He can cast the little mini one a long way. It, this is a quarter ounce with a really good hook on mm -hmm. it, man. But so is the Mini Max, does the Mini Max have a bigger blade? What's the story? I didn't go to ICAST. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, so anyway, this little mini series, man, it's a quarter ounce with a really nice hook, dude. Mm -hmm. That thing catches it, man, with that freaking pearl blue ghost. Mm, that's nice right there. I think maybe sometimes people I don't know. bring a bait to market too early. Yeah. The timing's a little off, and maybe that was the case. And now you're seeing, like, the mini flip jig for missile is amazing. Sure. Now they've got go. Ike's mini swim jig, so I'm pumped about that. Shout out to Ike and Alley, Missile Baits. Um, Hell yeah, man. Know, the Dirty Jigs finesse swim jig's always been good. So I'm sure Z-Man said, you know, let's rebrand this thing. Let's bring it to market. These compact baits are really popular. I think the Ned has really spurned a lot of plastics and jig makers to put the, ooh, the grass ripper. Yeah. Now, see, to me, this is where JDM excels, right? So it's got a badass Gamakatsu hook. It's stout enough to get into the heavy cover. It's a quarter ounce bait, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they actually write it in English on the back, this is evergreen, by the way, they talk to you about why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. I don't know that many American companies take the time to talk about their engineering because maybe there wasn't a ton of thought that went into the engineering or maybe there was and they don't explain it. So somebody has to get on YouTube to explain it, right? But here it's like, you know, when the packaging is Japanese and fully in Japanese, but Evergreen's getting the message, if you're going to sell it in the domestic market... People got to be able to read English. the back. Yeah, man. I mean, it always frustrated me that I couldn't understand the videos and or read the packaging. But uh, here, I'll show you that in white, because I know people are probably more of a fan of a white swim jig. But chartreuse over white, which is interesting, right? Chartreuse over white, Wesley Strader style. But quarter ounce on a badass frame, man, and super compact, a clear jig, uh, a weed guard, clear. That little mamba jamba, when my grass gets thick, I've been looking for something like that, man. Really have been. So I think that's going to that's gonna help me keep the swim jig bite alive. It's just like a quarter ounce chatter. Those are going to be available people. in the U.S. really soon. Yeah, yeah. If not, some places, um, you know... Uh, I got something for you. Here's what's happened too in the market. A, a lot of companies are sending their mom and pop shop stuff first before they send it to TW or online. Uh, like my buddy McKee Outdoors, he he he's the one that got those SB 77s for me, and he yeah. was he's he said, I think he's had some of those evergreens, but Tackle Warehouse is just they order so much that they're like, mm -hmm. we're gonna make ten thousand of these, but we're gonna make two or three hundred. We're gonna send them out. To independent shops first, so they aren't waiting six right. months. You know, right? You give them first shot, right. and then TW gets the mother load. Uh, so, but you know, logistics and supply chain issues are a real thing right now. Everywhere. Oh, there's no doubt, man. I didn't know about this, but who who loves the Kitex? Everybody. Oh, I love Kitex. They they just catch them. Did you know they made a saltwater version with tougher plastic? Yes. I did. Did not know that. <laughs> ah, yeah. no, I, man. I just found this today. I'm like, so a, damn. A little pro tip there. A lot of guys that know about that, they use that saltwater version in the summer. And they use the yeah. normal ones in the winter. In the winter. Yeah, yeah softer, better yes. action, harder bait, lasts longer, yeah. warmer water. Warmer water will uh, really you soften know. your bait up, too. Mm -hmm. so sure, sure. You'll notice a lot of times in the summer, your kitex, they'll get hot and all that. And they'll just, they'll almost be too floppy. Where you yeah. Get that harder plastic if they soften up it makes it perfect here's a bait that you've never seen with something that is look this, this is this is the stuff that got me excited about jdm right so um it's evergreen but does that can anybody name that bait hold on oh sorry yeah it's on the package <laughs> bud. no no it's not no it's not i hit it i hit it i, I did hide it so Hold on, let me make sure it's not here. Yeah, okay, what is that bait? It's And I'll give you a clue. The On the front of the bill, I don't want to open this because, you know, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, there's a titanium wire that is around the front of the bill. 
it separated from the bill. And, and the concept was, whether it worked or not, but it's the ingenuity and the thought that somebody was putting into this. So the, the concept was that the titanium wire would, A, make a clicking sound when it hit rock, but B, it would create a bouncing effect, like a really wild action. And we know when square bills and things hit cover, you know, when they deflect, so mm -hmm. more deflection. But isn't that incredible? I, I don't know if you guys can see that or appreciate it, but there's a titanium wire around the front of that lip. And I'll, does anybody know what it is? It's not a combat crank, is it? it? Well, no, it's not a combat crank, but I love combat cranks. I love the Evergreen combat cranks. I, I'm going to be they honest. A, I think Evergreen is probably one of the more underrated JDM companies. Everything they make is really good. All right. The, let's see. Nobody's got it yet. I'm just going to let that marinate a little bit. Marinate. but. It, it has it has combat on the side, but that is not the name of the bait, by the way. Right, let me let me grab it, this it was, big old uh, evergreen bait out here if I can not get hooked. It had a it's from June Shoji nickel titanium al alloy. And what's really cool is they give the bait designer props. Now you guys could probably Google search this, but uh, they gave the bait designer props right on the package, bait man. June Shoji. Isn't that cool? Uh, I've noticed a lot of Japanese tackle. They always put designed by and it'd be whoever's name. Like, you buy a Strike and, King you, bait, it won't say design. They always put, like, a Strike King Pro. Which, I mean, sure, I'm right. some, some of it's true, but most of their companies have their own design guy or whatnot. Like, Six Sense, you know, most of the stuff, yeah. uh, it's Casey's idea or something. Philip Jones, he's their 3D guy. He does it. Right. Dude, this is one of my right. favorite evergreen baits. The irony? Oh. U.S. It's irony? The Amazon. Oh, the Amazon's bigger. So, I can't see it. You got you got to hold it lower yeah. for me because I can't see me. No, low. There you go. Now yeah, I can see it. It's a great big oh, top yeah. order. So the Amazon, the giant. Obviously, this is inspired I've only got by a couple. another JDM bait, which was the Sammy, which was inspired mm -hmm. by a spook. Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal with this Amazon, and it's. I think the hookup tackle had some. I think you're gonna see them at Tackle Warehouse too. The fat this sum was junior. The predecess. That predecessor to them all. That's right. The fat sum is basically, um, <laughs> it's basically the Sammy beforehand. Supposedly, yep. Mike Buka told me this because he worked for Lucky Craft. Fat sum, the brothers. The reason it's called the sum. Uh, the guy that designed the bait. This is his dog's name. Was it sum. So, yeah, or Sam. Yeah, I thought it was Fat Sam. Sam Fat that's Sam, why this was his dog's no, name. That, that's why it's the Sammy. Right. Because his dog's name was Sammy. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're taking the dog for a walk. Genius idea, actually. Awesome. But this Isn't Amazon cool? has a huge sweep side to side. Mm -hmm. So you see Strike King come out with the Mega Dog. Okay. What I was told was the Strike King Pro. It fishes like Amistad. Uh, I, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want him to get in trouble or anything like that. Was basically throwing this and the Big Sammy, and they wouldn't really touch the Big Sammy. And he, someone gave him an Amazon and said, throw this. And he would watch these fish come out of that deep, clear water and just crush it. And he said, there's something about wow. that wide glide. So he got with striking and said, oh, we'll just make a Mega Dog. Which Mega Dog is a good bait. Has a lot different action, though, than the Amazon. Than the Amazon. Yeah. And that's interesting is that they built that in to, to so it's a glide bait on the surface, mm -hmm. you know, the big gliding action that really it's, but th that's the, that's, you, you, you nailed it there. The design, the form follows the function, right? Um, anyway, so pretty, pretty, pretty freaking cool, man. Yeah. I freaking love it. Someone said Evergreen that, Flat Force is a really good flat side. I haven't thrown it. I want to. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I'm throwing a flat, I'm throwing them. I'm probably throwing That's a ball. That's my so. only deal there. So, I love the flat force. I've thrown it. But, so, here's a perfect example. This spring, dude, I laid on a Jimmy Eater plug for, like, a month. They just wouldn't stop eating. Yeah. That little grind, that balsa grind. It's crazy, And no dude. offense to Jimmy's flat sides. They're awesome, too. That's the only thing I tied on. You know, I, I yeah. throw a little six cents around and whatnot, catch a few fish. But, when I fished that first derby in the a year i tied that eater on beforehand i said man they're gonna buy it and yeah first first fish in the morning dude threw uh, a kvd 1.5 over this lay down like three times 
And, of course, I'm in the back of the boat, and he's he's on a mm-hmm. spot lock re so I'm just same lay down, about the fourth cast, come off that. You feel that bait, do a little hunting, and it hits that, hits that limb, and I felt it back up, and all of a sudden that rod went, whoop, there he was. Whoop. And he goes, I'll Isn't be there. Awesome. He's out there at that thing like five times, and uh, you know, I ended up catching three keepers on that thing. And uh, yeah, every time it was off a piece of wood that they had already fished, and it just told me there's something about that balsa. But there are yeah. some awesome balsa builders in Japan too, by the way. Holy crap, man! Drip baits and mm-hmm. freaking unbelievable what, guys. What's that? Man. Monkey brains, and they're like three, four hundred dollars. I don't even know, man. I I don't even look at it because I don't want to get the wants. You know what I mean? Yeah. But hey, they're buying a lot of American-made balsa makers too, man. Yes. I know yeah, that uh, uh, Jaw Jack, they, they, Rob Cox, they were a bunch over there. Sure, Marty does. They, they're inspired by the American makers. Balsa was invented here, bro. That's right. I think. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. I think the balsa bait industry in Japan is relatively new compared to here. I might be speaking out of turn, but I mean, Friend Young started it all, man, back in what, 1755? Yeah. Way before <laughs> my time. Way before yeah, my with time. Yeah. The- with the big O, man. I mean, that started the whole alphabet plug craze, the square bow play. That was that was a balsa bait. Ooh, here, here's a so, question anyway. from Sean Law. He said, "What are your thoughts on the Nori's Volcano Gripper Buzz Bait?" Man, there's so many great buzz baits I like that I just I can't put down. Um, We're, we may, I we usually end up turning this show into a buzz bait show before the night's over. Every time. <laughs> What's the one with the tungsten bead on the on the arm that I really love? Hold on, I got mega go. bass. Let me go get. No, before the mega bass, I was I, I had that bait. This one I'm about to show you for years before mega bass ever came out. Give me one second, I'll, I'll be right back. A second. Yep. Oh wait, I think I got it right here. Hold on. Yeah, waterwood balsa baits are, are good, Kyle. I like them. They're actually not balsa. They're made of a. They're made of a different wood. Uh, they're made of like a uh, a cedar style. Ooh, we almost forgot to talk about this. Dang, man. Dude, talk about what? Matthew, the Nori's Ooh. NF60 frog is really good, and there's a lot of pros that throw that frog and never, ever talk about it. I've got one, and it walks really good. But the best part on that Nori's is the hookup ratio. Dude, JDM frogs are another market that's amazing, too. you got got uh, the Depths Buster K, the Slither K, the Bass Risky uh you know osp makes the diving frog uh pretty crazy yep 10 feet under dude they make some really good uh, boss flat sides all right man here it is man before the the one you're talking about it is a mega bass bait it, it's the rattling it's the viper ah yes way smaller than their giant one dude i have See, I like that better. I had a, a the boa or because this is this is this is three eighths, man. It's just it's just way more compact. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's your Nori's that he was talking about Woo. NF60. I like the NF60, bud. That's a good frog. But man, we we forgot to talk about the original Balsa Pro Ooh. and Dairitsu Explode pencil, right? The Balsa Pros were numbered on the bottom, and the uh, the the this one. Hold on, man. The Dairitsu, this is number 11,403. So I got a really good early model. <laughs> they numbered it. 11,403 of these baits were made. Dairitsu Balsa Pro. Explode. I'm sorry. This is the Explode Pencil. This is the original Balsa Pro. Badass. Probably one of the best finesse. Because you cannot beat the responsiveness of Balsa mm-hmm. when it comes to, I think... You know, that's a whole nother realm of JDM tackle is the whole finesse game. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, like over... it's really cool to watch like how things go. Like, you know, it starts out standard sizes, then it goes big, and then it kind of goes back to finesse, like with the Ned right. rig. But yeah, there's a whole Don't you feel like in category. Japan they start finesse and then maybe gradually get bigger where in the United States it's yes. totally opposite. I think it's driven because it's so damn hard to catch a bass in Japan, right? It is. Uh, that's and that's one thing I was wanted to point out in the stream. You see all these crazy designs, these ultra small stuff. You got crazy appendages on plastics in Japan, and a lot of it's just got to have something different. If you've ever been over there to Lake Biwa, 
Imagine yeah. like, Kentucky Lake in its prime times ten. Just Lucky Craft Clutch. That's a good Lucky pick. Craft Clutch. You know, this is like a minus one, but really tiny and cast like a bullet. Mm -hmm. um, good rattles. I in always it, man. like those small Lucky Craft boats, like the Gerald Swindle Wake Bait, the Skeet fat mini dr they're little finesse crank baits they're not micro they're just smaller finesse those really caught a lot of fish dude right here man i'm about to show you what you're talking about do you remember that they made a fat fat bds zero yes dude yeah that one catches it's sleepers man it's sleepers it's a little Daddy shit that's freaking do you remember <laughs> oh, the old... bds it <laughs> Oh, a lot of bats. <laughs> Tiny. You didn't even know, did you? It's a baby you? bat. You know it is, of course, I man. Like it. It's called the little bat. It's called the little bats. Yeah. But, man, I, I haven't even thrown this, man. I got to be honest. But if it got really goofy during the post spawn and, and they they wanted to eat something small, a fry garter, I don't know, man. I think they'd eat it because they ate the big bat. And in the in the regular size bat, but anyway, you know, I'm goofy when it comes so to Sean asks is the crazy. kick knocker, the tackle as good as the Vixen. It's the same bait. So basically Hideki owns the mold for the Vixen and, and the kick knocker is just the Vixen with a different name and for different colors. Mm. Anyway, the whole category of finesse that you could just go crazy on, man. You know. Do crazy. you ever get into the JDM reels and stuff, or do you just st I just no. stick to the tackle? Man, it's just so much easier to, to buy uh, reels here. And, you know, I bought some overseas, uh, Shimano in particular, and um, I didn't feel like the gearing was as stout as the American-made stuff, and I paid the price, you know, because uh, of where I was fishing, heavy cover, mm -hmm. and it's kicking the shit out of me. So, anyway, no, man, I just stick with my regular stuff. I mean, it's hard to beat the Shimano E7. Not um, a JDM question, but Will Perryman says, do you throw leaf system balsa baits? No. I'm not a... I think Lee makes a good bait. It's just not one that I'm going to pull out first. I've got a few. E E7's going in for service, dude. I mean, best, best Shimano ever made besides the old green tanks right there. There's going to be very few people that disagree. My fishing partner, that's all he still has. And he, he, he was like, I need to sell these. And I said, why? The, the old the old old green ones the or the, new, the newer e7s the e why yeah i said why and he goes well they're getting old and I said, they still work don't they he said well yeah he said, i just started back you know getting some newer lose and I said why don't you just go get them uh, clean man. trust me on that get them clean man yeah when it comes winter time and he's not fishing send him out to a reputable person to repair i mean that's what he should do right in my opinion man but um hey man here's some here's some exciting stuff uh -oh. A little bag of Marty Burns prototypes uh -oh. that I'm about to go throw. I'm looking for some. I'm looking for a balsa bait to fish my grass. That's going to have great secondary action. That's going to be super responsive and do things that plastic baits can't do. Here, these are going to the test pond. How exciting is that, that's man? Exciting. So he's almost done with my first batch of epic shads, the which epic I'll share shed, with everybody. I like that name. Yeah, man, I do too. You're, I'm pretty excited about that. You've taken the Epic Eric brand to the next level. I'm really excited. This is this is where it all happens, man. This little black box. Little black box. I, I can't show what's in the black box, man. It's like it's like that it's like that scene in Pulp Fiction where the guy opens the briefcase. Yeah, and the light shines and it, out. And, and, and the gold lights. I, I wish I had a gold light right now because that would have been a cool effect. But just everybody imagine that there's a gold light shining on me, and I can't give this to you because it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> we just did a pulp, pulp fiction scene. <laughs> uh, what else are we... Crazy. We, we talked about Japanese spinner baits a little bit. Other than the super eruption, is there... You got any other uh, sleepers in there? I think Jackal makes it pretty good. Uh, not It's not the super eruption to make another one that's different. Well, let, let's say... Let's talk about the super eruption junior. Because you got the super eruption, which is awesome, but the junior is a badass little bait. Way more compact, same style, reverse teardrop blade, different vibration. Um, I got one. I got one. I got one for you. And one of the things I like about this, they're, they're spinner baits and buzz baits. Spinner baits in particular. Now, sometimes the welds fail. Mm -hmm. Like on the super eruption, they weld those beads, and they could do it in another way, and it's got a bend in the arm. 
creates a vibration unlike anything, but the welds on the beads fail after a while. So it's not a super durable, like you're not going to be throwing it for years, but you know, spinner baits get mangled after a lot of fish catches. So what's up living um, Missouri outdoors. I've been watching BTL like every morning this week, by the way, we got a shout out, uh, by a guy named Bo. If anybody watched BTL with Bo on there, yeah, he basically acknowledged me in Epic, said he loved the streams. And then I follow him on Instagram, and I didn't say nothing. I just hit him with the follow. He messaged me, and he said, Yo, Bateman, I love the streams. You and Epic Eric are amazing. So shout out to Bo. He was awesome on BTL, and uh, I'd like to get him and Eric at the same time as guests. He, oh, man, dude, he was like cool. on the monster energy drink or something. His energy level was like us times 10. <laughs> I think he had Jeffries freaked out. Holy shit. Oh, here's something else I wanted to show you. So let's let's just look at JDM, like Chris Aldane, uh, the Mega Bass. Um, what is that? Dark uh, Sleeper? No, it's not the Dark Ashikira Sleeper. It's the Jig Head with, yeah, Okashira Screw Head. But who knew? That this has been made for years. It's called the Whistler Jig. I'll be named. This thing is old as dirt. Northland Tackle. Look, yeah, Northland Tackle made a Whistler Jig before the Okashira Screwhead. Yeah, the Okashira Screwhead looked way more sexy than his ugly ass Whistler Jig. Yeah. But there are guides that'll only give a Whistler Jig with a swim bait to their clients to catch fish. Anything bites this. Yeah, a two pack, eighth ounce. This is green perch. Dollar ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Not bad. Not bad. Versus a three pack of uh, Okashira for what? I don't know. Yeah. And, and, you get the concept, I'll be honest, man. I don't so, throw the Okashira. Maybe I'm missing something but out. You don't. You don't fish for finesse smallmouth shit, man. You're a power I'll guy. Fix it to you. So in Kentucky Lakes. Well, uh, Darius is going to show me know, something tomorrow. But you know what I'm saying, right? I mean, you, you're not a standard like go out and throw, you know, light spinning rod tackle with eight pound leader and no. freaking 10 pound test right that's not who you are i literally got like one spinner rod and reel yeah that's what i'm I saying so two, i mean or three but i mean that screw head is designed for you know spinning tackle dude with a spark shad or a haze dong shad or yeah. whatever man Northland tackle also makes an airplane head i don't know if you've ever seen it but it's got two little fins on it so yeah so keeps it level it makes it level but when it falls it goes you know like a circle yeah I always wanted yeah, to tie a big bucktail on that, but that I think that would be the problem actually, is oh, those man. heads like are, a dying shad. Yes, like so when we throw that hair jig and it's falling, yeah. they got the teardrop stuff just falls and got to pulse the airplane head would just spin that thing. But I don't think that, like I'm a dying shad, bite me. Yeah, I just don't think that head's heavy enough. You gotta have about yeah. a half ounce hair jig. Well, I'm talking but bucktail hair. It's make not a, like five they could make a big one. Yeah, I'm sure you could strap some lead to that that guy. Anything's possible. Uh, right. We were talking spinner baits, and you ever throw the mega bass, like the V3 or any of that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Did you? Do you guys? Is there anybody who's a fan of the? Uh, I didn't bring a bunch of them out from the from from back in back in back of the shop, but what about the mega bass SV3? Anybody a fan? I got one. Oh, I like it. I think I got that same but, color. So, so does anybody have a problem with throwing a spinner bait and wood and it rolling over? Yes, I have. Had <laughs> you know, roll over the wood. Right, and so this is, you know, again, this is something that they think about. Does it perform the way they say it's going to be? But they keel weight it. Mm -hmm. Most of the lead is here, so it keeps that thing stable. Uh, what was the other spinner bait? Was it the V three? Yeah, I think yeah, the V three. One up here. So it's like the Nori's Hula Chat designed to go through cover. So now you got a, a cover chatterbait, you know, like a cover crank and crank yeah. bait that's designed I think that's for wood. That's the uh, SV3. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the SV3. It's it really is a really good looking little yep. bluegill color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what blows my mind though? And as I mean, expensive here's as the other thing stuff is, like, is, their spinner baits are actually for JDM are pretty, pretty reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And look, doesn't need a trailer. They put this little squid style. That's like saltwater and spiled inspired squid trailer right there that you'll see yep. on squid baits so it's, it's got a built-in trailer uh you don't need a curly tail grub now a different action than a curl tail grub but anyway that's the kind of thought I'm that goes into the, the bass. Mega bass i know i got one i bought some from a dude really cheap here it is yeah look here this is the v2 
So, see that? Look at that wire band. You mm -hmm. see that? It's, it's, it's almost a curve. It's crazy. I'd like to know why they did that. Yep. So, this is the but V2. You can't read the packet Let, let's compare. So, uh -huh. I'll go down here for Eric. Number one, the wires are totally different as far as the bands. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. These are more of a true and, tear teardrop blade on the V2. And I've thrown this mm -hmm. and this thing runs really good. The yeah. SV3 is more of a true... Getting a lot of glare tonight for some reason. More of a... Ah! Got a damn sharp hook too. Uh, Ooh. It's more of a traditional willow. But you'll notice that right. V2 is even more compact. The skirt really doesn't mm -hmm. go much past the hook at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different style head. Different style head. Yeah. Yep. And see how they weld the beads on that that V2? Yep. Well, Eric's talking about, guys, uh, like on the so clevis of a spinnerbait, yeah. American stuff, these beads, this one is, is the clevis can move up and down, but this bead here, uh, I'll put it on my webcam, these beads don't move. They're welded. And so what that causes sometimes is when that bait falls, that this blade is spin as it's falling. The mm -hmm. super eruption is mm -hmm. the best one at doing it. They've, they've got that locked down. No doubt, man. I mean, and first of all, when you when you cast that bait, it hits the water. As soon as you engage the reel, the blades are spinning. Yeah. If you stop it for a second, which is, you know, you're coming past the stump, you stop it for a split second, that thing, the blades engage instantly. So they're helicoptering down. So it has a lot of secondary action to trigger strikes, man. So it's design. It's like form follows function, man. I think about that stuff. I think that's what makes JDM special. Not to say American baits don't do some of the same right. things, but they really think through the design, most companies, and there's some really innovative companies out there, and we talked about some of the brands tonight. So Yeah. Yep. Been on for hour 15. Uh, trying to get some questions here. Uh, yeah, anybody got any ooh, questions? Tim man? Maynard, anybody throw the depth spinner bait? I've not thrown a depth Yeah, man. Bait. Oh, the, the depth mini, bro? Damn. That's another sleeper. Dang, Tim, why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> yeah. Depth's Mini Bro is a super compact with a very small hook, but I'll tell you what, the half ounce is really small and compact for a half ounce. Uh, special blades on them, you know, stamped. It's got a little fish eye. It always falls off, by the always way. Always feels like that but, small, compact JDM stuff really starts to shine about now till yeah. October because you get the shad have spawned and they're fried mm -hmm. growing up and they're all like that long. And yeah, Matthew, those smaller Matthew blades, more Sorry. finessey stuff is really yep. goes off pretty crazy. But you can burn that bait, and it's compact. It's a very compact bait. It's about the size of some quarter ounce um, American made. It's a half ounce, dude. Um, the Wind Rage Tandem Willow Leaf is a killer spinner bait for sure. Um, there's a, I mean, you could just spend all night on freaking spinner baits and buzz baits. I mean, pick a category. Crazy man. Here's a, here's a question. We're on spinner baits. Someone asks. Uh, who makes the best single Colorado half ounce? Uh, need to get one that like, can feel the blade thumping. So he's basically looking almost like a knot style design. I mean, I'd say like Berkeley Covert, man. I mean, um, freaking Booyah, the Covert. The only series. problem I have with the Covert, and mm -hmm. you talked about it, it happened to you too. I know, rusted rust hooks, on, rust on the hooks. I haven't thrown their knot blade. Doesn't make any sense, man. Uh, I know, dude. I actually like the War Eagle one. I when I went knot mm. fishing the last couple of years. I mm -hmm. really like the thump and feel of the War Eagle. They're not going to hold up real well, but yeah. the hook up, uh, accent makes it really good. Uh, so oh, yeah, man. It's hard to beat the old Stan Sloan. It ain't a spinner bait. Oh, it's for a sure. The aggravator. aggravator. Aggravator, baby. I got a bunch of those hanging back in the back. That's a kind of forgotten daytime technique is short arm spinner baits. Did you talk about angler assets? I haven't. He makes some. Oh right there, yeah, bro. he my boy makes Dude, some Robert good. Man, makes, you can call him up. Robert makes some good stuff, man. Check out the profit, bro. I mean, that's the right. That, that is. I know. remember when I, I mean, carried him in retail. The wire on that's thin, crazy mm -hmm. vibration, brothers. Man, don't sleep on the profit. Yep, uh, Robert's a great guy. They're all made there in Illinois too. They big are, time, man. and always made in the USA. Big time, Eric Bateman supporter. Uh, it's. You know, I used to sell his baits retail, and that's how really? I heard of them because seven, eight years ago, I was running this one online store, and I'm like, what the heck is a profit spin? And so I'm filling this order, and I've seen I'm like, whoa, what's the, how did I not see these in the store? And I mean, sold dude, that, a ton that, of them. 
that wire is ultra thin it gets bit yeah i'll he but makes one that's, that's orange kicker blade a, right there he's got one that's got a white blade dude i throw that thing a lot hold on you talking about this one white white blade that's on the it, front right or there. white blade on the back that guy right, right there, there bro take your lunch money it's a good one it's called the uh, it's called pearl bait fish for those of you guys who want to know three eighths out profit spin boom i'll link rock bait man what are the chances i'd have this bait sitting right here well probably pretty high pretty because you <laughs> uh he that's makes crazy. that table rock plasma that's a really good one too got that purple chartreuse on. jiving on He's actually the first Hold guy on. that made a table rock kind of spinner bait. To be honest with you, I love t table rock shad, bro. I like that color. Uh -oh. I like. Uh oh, boom. Yes, table rock plasma. You know what bro? I like about Is his, it? and I, I love the Bateman special spot sticker makes, and yeah. Ryan's a good guy, and Roberts is really good because the purple's not so out there. Crazy. It's kind of translucent, and, and I really like yeah. that. It imitates, you know, a thread fin, a gizzard. Sure you can does, throw man. that when a lot of guys would want to throw a white you can throw that color and get away with it uh and you can throw it in the fall you can throw it in the spring it's just enough to tantalize dude there's it, a, there's this gilly this gilly's really really good damn you berkeley for stealing the prophet gilly name <laughs> anyway that's crazy i was sitting on those that's you no know i was going to say earlier it, now that i thought about it you know obviously companies have taken some heat but if yeah. you're an american company and you want to take a japanese design and bring it to the market there's a lot yeah. i mean think about how many fishermen they are how many guys knew of the ice icy or whatever that their bait was called icy gill how many people truly knew about it and actually had one in their box that they're fishing with alex uh, right nobody made a good post he's never seen an instagram post with somebody Never. that had a, a fish catch with that in its mouth. Neither have I. Um, now, will we will we see him with the gilly from Berkeley with fish catches in their yes. mouth? Because I, I think they're going to sell the hell out. Yeah. Now, we all know how social is, media is works, it, too. Obviously, if there's a really, really popular right? proper product and a million people have it, you're going to see more. And, you know, hey. I want to see somebody do a cast to catch with it. Yes. And I want to see how they're fishing it. Right. So I'm challenging the Instagram world. Somebody show me. Oh, I forgot to talk about this one, uh -oh. man. This is really interesting to me. Now, look, man, you know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite lipless baits is the original Yozuri Rattlin oh, vibe. I found one the Any other day color. in a random shop and I bought it and I paid two ninety nine for it. Dude, you, you were a smart man Chrome for doing black. that. This is a... This is a Yozuri. There is nothing that will shake your rod tip like this will in a in a vibration bait, a lipless vibration bait. This is the hold on, where did I put the box? I have one in the box. I can't believe I can't find the box. I just put the box out. Damn. It's the live. Hold on. I gotta go get another box. I oh, have it right here. Go get your box. I got I got too much stuff out, man. I don't know if you oh, know God, this, but the Strike King the Red Eye Shad was actually... Oh, here it is. The Strike King Red Eye Shad, you got to remember, it was originally the Red Eye Shad, was based off that bait right there. All right? It was based this off is, the original Rattlin' Vibe. So this is Yozuri. Okay, cool. Dual. This is Dual Yozuri. And this is called the Live Bait Shallow Vibe. It has a soft body, and it is totally... Now, Sally Hansen, this one up, so Ooh. forgive me if you hate the paint job. I don't Sally care. Sally did good. I like that pearl finish. Dude, but it's it's wire through. I threw these. This shook my rod so bad, <laughs> I was scared to throw it. But it comes in different sizes. Really hard to find the sizes. They don't make it anymore. But, you know what that reminds you know, it, me it, of? It got me thinking. It's silent. There's no rattles, by the way. Really? No rattles, no rattles. But a bait fish isn't hollow. And it got me thinking, why does balsa work so damn good? Balsa's not hollow. Wood baits, I think, in shallow water, it's hard to compete with a plastic bait. True. There are guys who will say, I can outfish you with a balsa bait any day. Uh, but anyway, I don't know, man. It, it just got me thinking. What do you guys think, you man? That reminds Anybody me of heard a that Lord one? Jensen Sugar Shad. It does, yeah, which I have right which down there. Which is an but it, amazing bait in super shallow water. 
Terry Terry it Bolton turned me very, onto that. Shout out to very Terry. Lazy. It's a very lazy, softer, vibrating bait. Um, that was a great bait to have in rotation when everybody's throwing traps or, you know, you, even though you're Zuri, you'd come through a grass bed when the fish might be turned off. You'd come back with a um, that that bait. It's just a lazy or I don't know how to describe it. It just hardly it doesn't vibrate like the other baits. It's a different vibration. And that's interesting. You know, it's kind of like, you know, grass bed fishing in the spring for me, these coves, they're all predictable. They're pre-spawn spots. The fish are going to be in the same locations. The better milfoil is going to have the better, larger fish. But sometimes they get pounded. You might have, I mean, I've been in tournaments. I'm going back a little Let's bit, but back. a really popular cove on the Potomac River. It's a federation tournament from PA, federation tournament from Maryland. There must have been 25 boats, and literally I could, I could cast into people's back decks. But there were so many fish in there, but there'd be little bite windows, and you had to really rotate baits to, to keep the bite going. I was pretty sneaky that day. I threw a little split shot rig, and I was wearing them out, man. You know, a split uh, shot rig's huge in Japan. Very much so. Like, you don't hear yep. about a Carolina rig much over there. You hear about split shots and jika rigs and yep. drop shots. and Absolutely. One thing I, I'd like to give uh, the Japanese guys, they've really, as far as... It's not just the baits, but as far as the techniques and rigging options, they've really thought outside the box. And mm -hmm. that's how the Nico rig came out. Dude, I love the Nico. I throw it more in a wacky rig. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen... Yep. Uh, we like this company, Geek Crack. Love oh, their yeah. stuff. Have you seen this oh, new yeah. Nico rig they've got? It basically looks like a pin, like a T-pin that you mm -hmm. put in it. You can put it into the... Like the uh, bellows gill so you can yeah. nico rig it because you can't I've put got, a band around i just bought i just bought eagle claw on clearance a t metal thing with a little plastic coat that you can stick in any bait you can stick it in a senko you can stick it in the bellows and that holds your hook through the middle i bought 15 in a pack for a dollar <laughs> on clearance really eagle claw makes one i didn't know that yeah Dude, it's got like it's metal. It has a loop with vinyl in the middle of the loop, mm. to, like you could puncture your hook yeah. through. And then so it goes, it's bell shaped, comes down, goes straight, and then has two hooks up. So you stick it through the bottom of a bait, a Senko, anything. Yeah, I like that. How about that? Yeah. Ter JDM Terminal Tech, I've got some decoy trebles. Uh, oh, they're stupid. I stupid I sharp. Got the uh, ones I've got, but a guy in a balsa group says, you, they're, man, I forgot that they're like a YMF 38 or something, but man, mm -hmm. I put them on some DT flats. You know, I love the DT flat, yeah. but the hooks aren't that good. Yep. Yep. They are amazingly sharp. Um, and you know, are, decoy makes those quad trebles too. So a lot of glide bait guys, top water mm -hmm. guys, uh, Brent Anderson, uh, told me put them decoy quattro hooks on a plopper. He may not even oh my God. tell you all that, but he was putting those on there. The, the hookup ratio goes <laughs> way up. What? You mean I finally got a use for those decoy quads yeah. that I got hanging around? Yeah, put one on a plopper. <laughs> put one on a plopper. I'm going to, man. Oh, guys, oh, I struck, swim bait guys. Dude, I struck gold. I struck gold. I found 25 OG ploppers, the good ones. All right, so, you know, I told guys about the OG Red Eye Shed. Let us know about the OG plopper. I know Brent Anderson. We got to get Brent on here with us, by the way. He's a great dude. We really do. Uh, we really tell do. us so about the OG apparent, plopper because Brent had this apparent, theory for a long time, and he was right. It he was right, man. It's the weighting. It's it's the thickness of the plastic, and the the newer ones tend to spin. Mm -hmm. These stay level. It's all about the packaging. If you can find the right packaging, you want me to yeah, show it? Go for it. We got to educate the viewers. I gotta go. I gotta go upstairs. Is that all right? Am I gonna tell you no? <laughs> okay, I gotta go get it, man. I got a few. I'm. A, I might have a few for sale because I got a lot. Uh oh. Of them. Yeah. I'm gonna paint some custom too, though. Can you yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm going to the garage. Hey guys, want to let you know. Thank you so much for joining me and Eric in on a Thursday night. We got 175 people in here. Almost hit that 200 mark. Uh, thank you guys for smashing the like button. I was going to do a giveaway tonight. But we just got so crazy. So tune in Saturday night. We're going to do another giveaway. 
we're going to do auction style giveaway kind of like Alex Rudd does whatever you donate uh, you'll get an entry for every dollar and uh, we're going to give away some I'm going to put some JDM baits I'm going to put together an awesome prize package for you guys and the guys are waiting out shipping your stuff out so uh, I got Eric don't tell him I've got him a Shimano banner I've got him a Shimano hat and I'm gonna throw him in some sneaky boss that he don't have I gotta send that to him but uh, anyway thank you guys again didn't have to work tonight so I thought I put together a special stream and uh, if you want to get a jank shirt just check out the Teespring store uh, in my bio it takes about a week and a half to get your stuff uh, the bait if the shirts get real popular I'm, I might have to reach out to TK's wife and see if she, she can print them and ship them to me uh, or something like that so we're going to stream again Saturday night uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about um, but we'll find something we'll, we may talk a little about some finesse soft plastics hey Sean lie with the five dollar make you holla appreciate it Sean you don't know how much ice cream you have bought for my kids my little girl I think you're her favorite sub because what y'all don't know is Bateman Jr. and his sisters, they'll get on YouTube and they'll rewatch these streams. And it was like two weeks ago, she said, Dad, it's time for to buy ice cream. Sean gave ice cream money. So, oh. Yeah. Look at that, man. Sean, man. What's up? Dude, I love Sean and Travis's video. All right, so there's the OG packaging. That is the OG plopper. You got to find the one. Uh oh, Eric just froze up. Uh oh, I lost you, Eric. Uh oh, what is going on? Uh oh, but except for a quad hook. <laughs> hey, hey, can you re what redo that? Like you totally froze out. I did. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I see that. Hold on. There we go. I was going to take it out of the package, but you need to get the one with Larry Dahlberg. See him right there? Yep. And then on the base of it, so this is the color packaging. The new packaging is red. Yes. This is mullet. I like this color, man. Man, that's got some sticky-ass hooks on it, and they are beefy for your 65-pound braid. Yeah, I probably still put a quad on it. Yeah, try that. I I love the monkey butt color, by the way. This kind of like so. It's got ghost minnow. It's got whopper plopper, and then the Larry Dahlberg signature on it. So that's the old ones. And mm -hmm. see that new one? They put that little spacer in there too. You you know. Mm -hmm. what? I'm not yeah. so sure that spacer was a good idea. It keeps the grass out, but right. You know how it is. They changed one thing. In in theory, it makes the bait better. But yep. yep. The reverse is sometimes the bait may technically be better, but man, right. catch him as well. Tim Maynard just gave a ten dollar make you holler. Tim Maynard, appreciate you, man. Says glad for the bait minute. That's Eric, awesome. Eric back on the live stream. Hey man, I'm, Tim's I'm awesome, glad. Man. Usually I, I don't Tim reach Maynard. out to He's Eric in the summer because he fishes way more than me, and people always yeah. get, Well, what happened to you and Eric? Why aren't y'all streaming? I'm like, yo, he just fishes more <laughs> than me, so. He's really tired on Saturdays, and, and to be honest, I think we do better damage in the non-fishing months when we got all this oh, new tackle, yeah, and we can sure, talk man, them boss sure. baits. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Vince Savin, $5, make you holler. Vince, appreciate that $5 donation to the stream, bud. I got ideas on these. I want to see if anybody... So this has got a beefy hook. I know everybody's going to complain about the blade falling out, but if the blade falls out, I don't care. I'm going to put... I'm going to try something with this one to see if I can keep it. Uh oh, Eric's breaking up again. He's got the mega bass OZ swimmer. That's delicious. I got ideas, but I got ideas. Hey, Eric, I'm going to recall you on Skype. I'm going to recall Eric. He's cutting out. I'm going to recall Eric. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's definitely Skype. Guys, I'm sorry about that. I'll get Eric back in here. I think it's a Skype issue. going on all right my skype's not working so let me let me let me pull up old skype real quick eric if you can hear me on the stream you call me back see if that works what in the world is going on uh i'm enjoying being a viewer now all right i don't know what's going on eric i'm trying to call you back and it's just sitting there I'm not gonna. I don't want to restart the stream because I'll lose, it, lose everything. Maybe that. Uh, maybe that means uh, it's time to get off the stream. I don't know. I'm just trying to give you all the juice. All right. Let me try something real quick. Let me try something real quick. Let's see if I can get get Eric called up here. Calling me now. My Skype's frozen. What the heck? I don't I don't I don't get it. I do not get it. Like everything was going so smooth from the original hiccup and then I gotta find, uh, let's take Eric off here for just a second. Maybe that's what's happening. Got neighbors arguing in the background. Think we're fixing to get a fight going. Be pretty nice. World star. My Skype's not working. My Skype is not working. Holy cow. All right, let's try this one more time. If this doesn't work, we're probably going to have to interrupt for the night. I'm going to let her load here. I'm going to let her load. Oh, there it says Eric, one missed call. Let's see if we can get him back in here. Uh oh, I think it's going to work, guys. I think it is going to work. You here? All right. Let's try this again. Eric's back, guys. I'll get him in here in the stream. I don't know why I did that. Then it froze up on my computer, Eric, and it didn't even want to go. We're not going to go too much longer anyway. Yeah, uh, right. Because you probably got to work tomorrow, don't you? Uh, yeah, but it's all, you know, I'm a late night dog. So, no, man, you do your thing, man. I meant to ask you, you got, okay. any, good, you got any good Netflix Hulu recommendations? I know you oh, love be watching some stuff. Dude, man. Um, so, what was I watching last night? War of the Worlds, not the one with uh, Tom Cruise, but it's a series. I dug right. that. Um, man, what else did I like? What was the FBI profiler ones? Love that. Did your wife uh, watch all the serial killer stuff? And no, like, no, she man. won't watch any of it. No, 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 no. Of course, Ozark. I mean, Dynamite. But any new stuff. We were watching Feed Phil. That was kind of cool. My wife wants to watch stuff that makes her feel good, man. You know so, what I really like is documentaries. I love we she, we love documentaries. So we watched Shit's Creek. That was funny as shit. Yeah, I like Shit's Creek. That it's was funny. hysterical, man. We laughed our asses off on that one. Yeah, I, I would man, really the like to do. Looking good, dude. The picture's looking good now. I know. I don't know why we're reconnected to the stream. I mean, Batman Junior's home. Got, I know he's playing video games. I just heard him yelling at his cell phone. Um. Uh, <laughs> Neil is here, but I, I, you know what I think the issue was tonight. I don't know if it was my internet. I think it was just Skype. Sometimes I feel like it's really yeah. unstable. Uh, I know, like serious. Hello, Bass said, join the Streamyard Revolution. I don't really want to pay twenty five or thirty bucks a month though, because I can. Yeah, I have some issues, but it's free to do like the Streamlabs deal, and I like it where it pops up the donations gotcha. and stuff like that. I'm cheap, dude. I got I'm cheap. 
I, I got gotcha. you. I like, got gotcha. you. I just bought new tires for my truck. Uh, I had to get one tire. You know, if you get one that goes flat, you can't just go buy a random one because they all look different. Yeah. I was like, well, I'll just buy one. Right. And it was like $220 because <laughs> I got off-road tires. Dang, man. But my buddy, shout out to Austin Brown, Custom Automotive. He's won two boats on Kentucky Lake. Hell of a fisherman. What on a jackal heck? bow stick, by the way. It's actually... On a, so you walk into... Jackal his, what? Jackal what? Jackal what? Stick. One of my favorite JDM baits, by the way. Show me, brother. You ain't got a bow stick? Oh, yeah, I got a bow yes. stick. Come on. This is actually exact color. So you walk into his store. It's got custom auto. I like the bonnet, too. I thousands like of wheels and tires. One of the most... They ship out online. He has won two boats on Kentucky Lake on this exact guy right here. That's so crazy. Blue back, white side. I, hold, hold it lower yep. for me. Basically, sexy shad. Oh, sexy Dude. shad. And I'll say this, Eric. Jackal's rendition of sexy shad is better than the American version. The yeah. actual now, original that, sexy is shad. Is it the bait from, or is he like finding the fish? I mean, or both. Huh? What is unique about the, the, the action on that bait? One, it's oh, really wow. loud in the water. It's actually, yeah, I don't know how to explain this. When it's in the water, the pitch is a whole lot different. Do you, th oh, so here's a good question. Fascinating. Do you think once Ooh. plastics hit the water, stuff that's got knockers, mm -hmm. do you think the water and the plastic make these baits sound different than you got them in your hand? Does it conduct the sound and vibration differently than just shaking your Dude, hand? I think so. It does. I, th I think so. Because yep. there's some baits, I think so. and this is one of them that I'm like, yeah, I'm not, you know, it, it's got a good sound. You yeah. throw it on, and it's working on top of the water, like, whoa, now we're talking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it could be opposite. I've heard some stuff, man, that sounds good in the water. I'm like, man, that doesn't sound very good. Like the those <laughs> Storm Arashi walking baits, the action's great, but it's dang near mm -hmm. almost silent in the water. But in your hand, you're like, whoa, this yeah. thing's loud. Loud, but, right. Isn't that weird? Yeah. But I can't I can't explain the acoustic thing at all. No. By the way, I, I I could play guitar, but I'm not that good. I, I can play like uh, basic country music. Man, how about uh, somebody's talking about the uh, the DRT clashes? Oh, I got a tiny clash. I lost the biggest one of the biggest passes in Florida the first day I was there on a on a tiny clash. You like the tiny clash? And it not and it and it knocked my lip out. And I didn't have any extra lips with me, man. Really? I was pissed. Yep. That thing probably was a DD, man. There's knock knock off DRTs on eBay. Hmm. What? Have you seen those knock DRTs on eBay? They have a K9 tiny cars with everybody at USJ Trout Car. I'm not an eBay right, connoisseur Matthew, like Matthew, Eric. Matthew, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say there's knockoff DRTs on eBay? Yeah. Whoa. In the packaging or out of the packaging? Like the whole shooting match? Hmm. Is somebody at the factory like taking them out the back door and selling them on eBay? Wait a minute. I will say this about the JDM market, and this happens quite a bit. When stuff gets yeah. popular, have you ever noticed it will get KO'd really bad? I don't mean from America. I mean all of a sudden the blanks are available. Lucky Craft blanks. And, the, and hey, let's, oh, that's yeah. how Six Cents started. You know, Casey was painting the LC1525 KL blanks. So mm -hmm. what he did is said, I'm not going to build a better bait, but yeah. I'm going to make better paint jobs. And it worked out for yeah. him pretty good. That's what he did. But yep. Now some of those mega bass oh, KO stuff. That whole KO market is crazy. What do you think? Are they the real deal? I think. Is it coming from the same Chinese factory I, that's making it for the real company? That's not what I always wondered. Are they? I you know I know I need to know. I don't but, know. I honestly don't know the answer. Some of those mega bass KOs, the weights are different. Uh, yeah. Internals instead of tungsten, it's brass or it's lead. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the bill's yep. just a little bit thinner, or the bait's a couple millimeters smaller. But I've always noticed, you know, as cool as the JDM stuff, all of a sudden, if it's real popular, there's blanks readily available for it. Right, right. right. Name a U.S. crankbait company, other than Strike King, who puts their own blanks out there, the Nude Series, that you can go and just get. They're actually selling their own blanks. Doesn't really happen yeah. very often. Spro's got yeah. a clear one, which you can buy a clear little John. You can. I've seen them all. Dude, I've, I've, I've seen them all. We've all seen it on eBay. 
Hey, I want to show something that was interesting. So you know we're big snakehead market around yes. here, right? I mean, we probably got we. I think the Potomac held the world record snakehead for a while. Great Northern snakehead. So so don't jam on me, guys. The Great Northern. You know what's great? Snakehead. Do you remember Not, but, the Great Snakehead pandemic where you got to kill them all? They're going to take over everything. You won't be able to catch a it bass. It was in my backyard. You realize I freaking hooked the snakehead in the pond where it came from. That pond I called Clinton's yeah. Pond. The pond that started the national craze around the snakehead is 10 minutes from my house. Really? Dude, I fished it as a kid all I the remember time. Remember, it freaked everybody out. out. And yeah, now they're absolutely. like a trophy fish. Guys are going crazy snakehead fishing. And guess what? Dude, the I bass was, fishing survived. Was, it's really good. Yes, it did. I, I was in a tackle store getting some of the OG stuff I showed earlier in the stream. And there's a dude that was listening to my conversation. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, do you... Uh, do you fish for bass? He goes, no, man. He goes, bass are dumb. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I fish for snakeheads, man. They guard their young. A bass will eat its young. Huh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? It defends the nest like it'll it'll defend its nest and die before. It, well, I mean, maybe after they spawn and, and hatch, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, man, has anybody ever seen a look at the hook on this thing? This is a snakehead design buzz bait. So this is uh has anybody seen a pink buzz bait double buzzer with a freaking tuna hook on the back? Holy smokes, look that at, is a tuna hook. Look at that. Yeah, because it's for 20-pound snakeheads. I mean, it's unbendable. If that's the hook that I think it is, Terry Scroggins would like it. But it's a double buzzer with kind of a bend, right, mm -hmm. and hot pink. I'm going to straight up tell guys, pink is a dynamite top water color, especially Will this buzz work? Bait. If I throw this, I know I'm gonna catch a snakehead, but I also catch some bass. It comes in white too, I, but I had to buy the pink because why not? I'm just impressed, dude. Look at that hook, dude. That is a gaff, it man. Is. I'm telling you. So we it, have like a lot their... of bite, a lot of bite area. Look, I mean, it, it, the blades will not interfere. It's a little. Like it's got that. that. It's got that little bend in the wire, so this is gonna run subsurface. I might change the skirt out. I don't know, but I'm throwing it, dude. Snakehead would love that. I'm throwing it, dude. I might throw a frog on the back of this instead of the skirt because I hate when, we can when a buzz bait. pink frogs for you. Or just to put a white and you'll have a little pink and white, you know? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. I'll find a trailer on the back of that thing. So we sure. don't have snakeheads here. We got what we call the grenel, a.k.a. the mudfish, the bowfin. Yeah, and yeah. Dude, they fight. It's unreal if you catch one. It They will whip you. But they'll, whatever you're throwing, usually, spinnerbait, buzzbait, frog, it's right. done for. Because, you know, our baits aren't bass baits aren't exactly made for catching bowfish i'm liking this 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 grub from from mega bass camurri Ooh, like, oh you know what that was it's got hey, that white it's got a pink highlight you know what that on would it. look great on talk to me brent anderson frankie five fingers elvis oh my gosh can you imagine that dude back of brent's center bait. Ooh, buddy i think we yeah that's what i'm talking about I'm trying to find that white buzz bait. I had one in white, but it's the same. I know. Thing, so, I, I you know, put a lot of spinner baits. I, I put a lot of small swim baits and stuff. But dude, I'm yeah. a big fan of a white grub worm on a spinner bait. I want. I want to pulse the audience right now for something. Uh -oh. We got 184. We're watching. Yeah, we're jumping back up. You got back. Uh oh, catching concepts. Who are fans of catching concepts? I had a bunch of them. I like them. They're, Herman builds a good bait. Herman builds a really good bait. If anybody's interested, I got. 60 plus of them what? i'm thinning out the inventory so bait man i'm gonna need some pricing advice but if anybody's watching i think these go for anywhere from what 35 to 50 i was gonna say pretty much i don't know 35 to what 50 is... you'll see some 60 dollar ones depending on color if you got a table rock yeah. one in there we'll talk <laughs> I, I might. long story on, short let get, eric let me when we first bag. started talking i had some of them and uh yeah. I never caught anything of them. They run good. They feel good. They're hard to get. I ended up selling them because they're just taking up a space in my box that I wanted to fill with other stuff. They are. What's up, Mr. Gampit? You picked up a batch of Berkeley beavers at Dick's. Went hard on the beaver, but I've went hard on the beaver a few times in my life as well. Clearance price... Man, every time I go to my local dicks lately, I haven't picked up anything good on Clarence. It's always like crappie stuff. I'm keeping these though. Sorry. 
I'm keeping these. It's like a green crawfish, man. What's up, Mike Bissett? Good to see you in a stream. Look how sexy this is, dude. He got he's got nice paint too. He does. These are eleven. These are these are two thousand eleven cherry gems, Ooh, man. Is that a which model is that is that the rip and C one? No, no, it's not the rip and C. This is like um The Little Herman I wish the, I, the Little Herman I, and I think it's the Little Herman. I think the LH has a square I think it's bill. A, I don't know. I I think this is the Little Herman. Does anybody know what model this is the catchy concepts? Because back in eleven and seven, hold on, these are these are two thousand elevens in sexy shad. He didn't label. He didn't put the no. model number on his packaging. What the hell, Herman? I, and now I forget. Damn it! I need some help. I need help. I mean, I'm always doling out a little bit of help. Could somebody help me? What's uh, man? I wish I had <laughs> mine. I still. I sold mine. I'm not dogging a bait, but it, they thump hard. They're a great bait. They definitely catch mm -hmm. fish. It just no question for me. I like the balsa. A little bit better. Yeah, it's just a different yeah. action. Uh, but I did like. Oh, dude, dudes rely on these. They love them in cold water, yes. bro. Um, mm. What was the name of his square bill? It's a. It's oh, a little bit um, fatter square bill. He makes his su uh, super, yeah, super B. Super B Junior. I really do like that bait. I did catch some fish on the Super B Junior. Super but B. Super long B. story short, I got to hurt and I need some cash, and so I was like, "Well, I'll just sell some catching concepts." <laughs> What'd you sell yours for? Uh, forty a piece. Mm, okay, that's a fair yeah, price. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, they sell out in minutes on Carolina crankbait, right? And so I was buying like, them at like they're gone. thirty bucks a piece. So I really didn't make much money. Yeah, I've seen guys yeah. sell them for way more, but uh, okay. But I had talked yeah, to Herman I, I, on Instagram or Facebook. He's a really nice guy. He said, "Hey, when I make a batch, you let me know if you ever need any." So no harm, no foul. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I'm still waiting on some of our culture cranks from Mr. Norm. I haven't talked to Norm what? yet, but that's why you got my box building up. You're waiting for the culture cranks. I got, you know, I'm just going to send it. I've been waiting on this box for a year and a half, so I'm going to put I you know. some surprises in here. By the way, it's got to be good, man. It's got to be good. You may even have most of this good. stuff, but I got a couple Shimano relics. Uh, what memorabilia? You know that I just happen to have laying around. I got you that Damn. Hat that put on TK's feed, but I got you something else to put up in your room. What? That's awesome, man. Maybe That's awesome. I was, bit, but all right. I forgot that what all good. I was. I got to send you Bagley's. I told you I'd send you Bagley's. Yeah. Some old rogues. I might yeah. have some other stuff laying around here. Man, you just whatever, man. Just pile it's, up it's, it doesn't matter what it is. Yep, exactly. Did you got? Exactly. Do you got any six cents axis crankbaits with the swinging metal lip? Nope. What? Not well, one. I got to throw one to you. It's like the yeah op, man. It, I'll go tell you straight up right now. It's waddle baddish. Don't try to burn yeah. it, or you're gonna go. What no kind of deal is this. But if you get that right. slow medium roll, you'll get that crazy roll. You'll yeah. see it hunt, and you'll be like, hmm. So yeah. something I like about the waddle baits and that axis, that blade on there, it can, it's mm. got a little bit of enticer flash. You know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, the sun hits a little man. bit, gets that crazy flash. You ever seen minnows mm -hmm. under the water? They're darting. You see that one sure. minnow? Just it's brighter than sure. the other. Sure. Secondary. Action. Sure. What was the word? I what like was the it. word we used if it had three different actions? Oh, tertiary. 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 Yeah. Tertiary. Oh, okay. Here, here's a good question for you. We're just, we're just, we're going to answer some questions. We'll get off on whatever for a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Drew, Cincinnati yeah. bass. There's Cincy Bassinati. That's a great name. What are some classic Bagley Wake crank models? Bagley? Bagley. I don't really get into the Bagley Wake models. I'm not a big wake baiter, man, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not, I, I haven't I found, like, I haven't scored big enough on wake baits to go, like, man, they're a huge part of my right. game. The MTB Wake... You know, because that's a bigger bait for a bigger bite. I found a use for that. I really feel recently. like the weight baits I like. I like the ORC jointed weight baits and the Gerald ones a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like those. I like yeah. the weight shad, the speed weight from Six Cents. But then the mm -hmm. rest of my weight bait game is like a true a swim bait. That's a, a weight bait. You know, like a the bull yeah. shad like wake the, and mm -hmm. the any yeah. type of rat. I consider a rat a rat, but it's really a weight bait if you think about it. Oh, I, I like throwing a rat. Now we're talking. Now you're talking my, 
Do my buddy. If I can get my buddy to make my damn Bass Lab rat, the ratified, that's what we're going to call it, ratified. That's sweet. I like that. Uh Dude, I have cracked them on that bait. They mash it. I'm going to go out with Scooter Lily and Slab Dynasty, and we're going to film a rat show. (laughs) <laughs> and we're going to see because I'm bringing. He's been liking my Instagram photos. I, I've messaged him a couple times. He's a good dude, Absolutely. man. You got a good fishing partner. Yeah, I love Scooter, man. He's amazing. He's an awesome fisherman. He's a hell of a captain for the boat, man. He's a solid dude. We laugh our heads off when we get together. Oh my god, man! I, I, Slab Dynasty's editing the video when I caught the eight. Was it eight eight or eight six? It had a ten pound frame, and it, it's a cast to catch on uh, some big Japanese. Well, no, it's American swim bait. What am I talking? About? No, it's Japanese swim bait. Sorry. Yes, so I am. My purple, and purple rat. That's so crazy Dude, looking, man. Off Instagram, sent me this. Oh. Have you thrown no. it? It's got tape on the hooks, Eric. <laughs> I thought you were just keeping the rust off yeah. or something, man. It, you got to throw it. I need it. to. It's, it's crazy. I forgot. It. Uh, my friend, yeah, Big Nasty Bates, he sent me a Big Nasty rat, but his buddy makes these. But it looks, That's it's got that rat kind of detail. Yeah, it and does, then, man. It, this is a really good rat. This is my buddy Sam Narrowgate Bates. It's got that big lip. Mm-hmm. Dude, this thing will crash and cover. But he's really, this is like uh, one of his OG I just started. Dude, his stuff mm-hmm. now is amazing. If you look him up on Super Instagram, refined. he's got a beaver. Mm-hmm. It's a mini beaver. It's got mm-hmm. a beaver tail. He was doing it before Berkeley. What? A mini yeah. beaver tail. That's crazy. Yeah, it like flops in the water. It's crazy. But he's done. Sam's rats are priced really good in that 60 to $70 yeah. range. They're all handmade. He's a school teacher. Uh, he's, dude, he had a video, Eric. So Sam is like two inches taller than me, and he can bench like 400 pounds. He's always been in shape. But he was one of the original catfish grabbers here on Kentucky Lake. Him and his brother. Oh, wow. Him. Noodler? Yes, Noodler. He took a GoPro and strapped it to his wrist back before this crazy YouTube phenomenon. Strapped it to his wrist, went diving on Kentucky Lake, you watch his hand go in the hole, the catfish box, and all of a sudden this big flathead, boom, snaps him That's right on the crazy, hand. Man. You see him wrestling and it throws it in the boat. You Dang. know how many views that would get? This was like years ago. That's insane, man. But wow. So now he's gone from bow fishing and grabbing catfish to building rats. Dang, said, man. Dude, you need to let me come over. We need to get some balsa and figure out a design. And let's. He's got a, a lathe and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's cut a balsa bait. Yeah, balsa's the joint, man. My buddy, that's what he's making my ratified out of, man. I have like five prototypes, and the original one was the best one. But there's like two little proprietary things we're doing that I think distinguish it from any rat out there, man. Yeah, dude, that rat, the one you've showed me, is awesome. Like, I, I know Dude oh. makes a really good rat, the gas rat and stuff like that. But, dude, I'm yeah, like paying flipper prices, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a problem. I, I, you know, if you could get if they were available, and I'm not saying you know that if my buddy makes a balsa rat, it's going to be any easier because pouring a bait out of composite versus making a wood bait, uh, you know, like Lendo makes wood baits, but I think he, does he also have composite baits? Anyway, most of the rats on the market, like the Nazuma rat, you know, which was I think one of the I OG like the, big I like rats. The Nizuma. The Nez rat, man, it gets bit for sure. I, I, we, me and my buddy Austin Neary went to a, a big bass tournament down on Norman. And, you know, the time was right because they were wolf packing. And uh, he was throwing uh, a custom uh, North Carolina-made rat. Looks like a broomstick, but damn, that action on that yeah. rat was sexy. So him and that guy had it falling out, so he can't get those anymore. But I brought the Nizuma rat. Mm-hmm. And, dude, for whatever reason, they wanted my Nizuma yeah. rat. This and it was just ridiculous. It was like five strikes to one. I like this guy. This, and, is, a, this um, is a big nasty rat. You know, it's his lip. I'll tell you like what, man. Yeah, it's, shape. It's not just a straight square bill. It's a good... yeah. Well, that that's that's the Nez rat yeah. shape. But he's got that big, yeah, big booty Judy on the back of that thing. Zoom. Mm-hmm. Does it knock? Is, is is it wood? Is it yes. wood? Let me hear it. Like knock the joints together. Yeah. Yeah. It might be resin. Yeah. It feels like wood yeah. though. Well, is it wood or you got to know, man? Because it's, I, I, I want to show you like a wood one. For This is from the Alu. This is Lendo Hall. This is the night fishing rat. This is the gnarled gerbil. The gnarled, I can't even say yeah, it right. Gnarled gerbil. Yeah, listen to this little thing. 
Woo! That's loud. Look at that little sexy freaking moon dust. I I, I want to fish wow. it. This is made for night fishing, by the way, but it's a black fiber carbon bill. Wow. That's pretty Who hot. makes that? This is Lendo Hall, man, over at Elude Bates. It's the gnarl gerbil. Dude. I wish I could I get like I'd want I want I want to repaint it. I'll probably send it to TK to give me a better color because it's got the purple on it. But this is for night fishing. I mean, you know, black and purple at night is pretty damn sick. I'm not saying he wouldn't eat during the day. Might as well just throw it and try it. Have you seen I'm the scared. I've only lizard? Got one. It's not it's it's a lizard style rat. I have. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, somebody just said Gary Ong, throw it with a rabbit fur tail. Yeah, that would be pretty sexy. Yeah, Sam, he puts he makes a squirrel. It's like ten inches long. And he's got Who does? He goes squirrel hunting, keeps the tails and he's and his brother in law <laughs> when they go squirrel hunting to give them all the tails so they make a big squirrel. That's crazy. Dude How about over and swim damn. school, that's hilarious. Oh, here's that rat. Definitely that'd be the only here's, thing I make clap tonight. Uh let's see. Here's the rat boss. Get them anymore. This little dude, look, this is about as plain. It's cutting in and out again. Zero paint on this. I'm probably going to send it to TK to put some paint on this thing. But the action, I can't even tell you what it was doing. I couldn't. I couldn't describe it to you guys. Eric is froze. I need some sexy paint on this. You know what's weird? Every time you move around and jump away from Skype, it freezes up. Let's take an audience vote. Talk to me, guys. Yeah, you're, you're chopping up, Eric. What color should I paint this track? Uh-oh. You tell them. Someone says it's your wireless headphones that are causing that problem. Now, I don't know if there's truth to that, but... Hello? Hello. Right, I'm going to re reconnect, and then we're going to have to say goodbyes, I think. I knocked Eric off. I'm gonna call him back. Here we go again. Sorry, guys. What is going on? Oh, we're still here. I almost turned my computer off on accident. That would have been bad. I'm going to get Eric back in, and then we're going to say our goodnights, probably. All right. Yeah, he's gone. What is going on here? All right. Eric's out. Eric's out. I'll try one more time. Try to get him back in here. It's weird my Skype isn't connecting. I don't want to sign out of Skype because I don't know if my password and I may never get it back. Test maybe. Huh. Give me a second here. Give me a second. Your viewers triple with Eric. Yeah, it's actually, I've been staying around 180, so I'm not sure how much the viewers tripled, but. Um, definitely was up tonight, which is fine with me. Here he is. Here he is. All right, he's back. 
I'll put it back in the stream real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's uh, going on there. So, dude, we've been on we've been on for like two hours. Yeah, I'm gonna I have to, to take, take a shower. shower. I've been, been freaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing I like about uh, streaming in the fall, winter, early spring is I like streaming here in the winter. I put me some sweatpants on. I'm like Sports Center back in the day where they just wore the suits and then they didn't have pants on. That's good Zonker Tales, if you can hear me. Yeah, Zonker Tales, that's what the first strips are called. And where can you get those Zonker Tales? My dude's froze up again. What in the world? Oh man, we froze up again. Froze up again. All right, I'm gonna try add Eric one more time. Can you hear me, Eric? I can't hear Eric. He's froze on my Skype. He's froze on my sky. All right. I'm going to text call Eric. Uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody joining in tonight. I'll link some stuff. Uh, Tackle Warehouse. Uh, get some stuff from Eric. And put it in the description of the video. Do me a favor. Uh, smash the like button on the video. Leave a comment afterwards. Tell me your favorite JDM bait. If you guys are here, comment on the video afterwards. I want to know your favorite JDM bait. And we'll try to get Eric back on here again pretty soon. I don't let him do his fishing thing. Uh, grab some merch. Uh, I'll see you guys Saturday night. Y'all pick out a topic. We'll figure it out. Oh, here he is. You're back. All right, I'm going to put you in so you can say goodbyes. I don't know what's going on. I think it's Skype, dude. What are you going to do? I oh, know. I should probably do the stream yard thing. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a few things I really like about this software. Actually, probably for myself, it's probably better off to go to this Here. platform. You're froze again. Gosh dang it. All right, I, we can see movement now. We can see movement. You got the Michael Jordan tongue permanently stuck on the string but uh eric i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to knock it out i'm not gonna fight with it anymore uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna call eric guys i'm gonna get off here and uh anyway uh thank you again for joining the stream very special this thursday night hope you learned you something on the jdm stuff and a tune in saturday night we're gonna give the six cent sack away um and uh who knows i might have